So, now it's time to go through Bob's move list. That's who's on the agenda for today. The big man, right? Bob. Bob. The fat man. The burger man. Yeah, that was a near tune. But now I'm on a KOF playlist. Get ready for the You're right. Nobody does play Bob anymore because he's not as good. All the more reason to learn what he can do now. Learn how to punish him. Then in the rare instance where you do run into Bob, you know, fuck, I gotta know what to do. You know? Alright, Bob is one of the characters with the uh, wave dash. With a standard cross dash. With the wave dash. So to give you guys a little history lesson, those of you that don't know about Bob, he was really good in tag two. He was one of the best characters in the game in Tekken 6 console. And in Tekken 6.0, he was probably the best character in the game. In Tekken 6.0, this launched on normal hit. Save fun block down forward to launch on normal hit. You might be thinking, but Manny, there's a couple of other down forward that do that. Like uh, Laws and Pauls. Yeah, but they don't have this much range. They don't have this amazing hitbox. They don't have as good of a high crush property as Bob's historically had. I don't know if it still has as good of a high crush in this game as it used to. And then also, they are not Bob, they don't, they didn't have everything else that Bob had, which Bob had other stuff. You may recall the Tekken 6 uh, Evo top eight where they were there were four Bob players. Core, who won the tournament, Fab, NYC Fab, who placed second, Tokido, Yes, that Tokido played Bob. And uh, Crow, I believe, was top eight, right? There was one other Bob in top eight. I forget who it was. It might have been Crow. So, Bob was fucked up in six in, in Tekken 6 console because of this move. Many reasons, but really this move. This move right here was fucking horseshit. The chop, uh, it was zero on block in Tekken 6. Knocked down. Hits mid, he recovers crouching, it did fucking everything. You saw a whole lot, it hit grounded also, by the way. You saw a whole lot of this. And then he could like, uh, he could do this. It's a backswing blow. Yeah, his backswing blow used to knock back on normal hit, I think. Really fucked up. And the thing about Bob is, despite his appearance, he moves very well. He is very, very, very evasive. Historically. Now, I don't know. Going into this game, I don't know if he's still any of this, these things, you know? I don't really know what's changed about him too much. Uh, didn't it launch on Crouch without counter hit? I don't know about Crouchers, but it launched uh, normal hit in general from standing people. I don't know about Crouchers. It might have followed the uh, down forward two rule set of like a Law or a Paul. Or a Leo. Of course, he has the health sweep. See? Negative 11. They made that shit unsafe. You never see this move anymore. They made it like negative 9 in tag 2. And in this game, they made that shit unsafe. <laughs> that move's fucked up. So, yeah. Uh, going into this, one of the things I know about Bob, one of his weaknesses is that he doesn't have a fast launcher from standing. From crouching, he's one of those 14 frame launching motherfuckers. While standing 2-1 is 14 frames. Not only that, if I'm not mistaken, the first hit, the while standing one, uh, sorry, while standing 2-1, the first hit is a high crush also, if I'm not mistaken. I'll get into that later when I actually get to that one. Uh, but from standing, his fastest launcher on normal hit is 18 frames. Down back uh, 1 plus 2. And then he gets weird juggles because he launches head towards. Uh, outside of that, he has like counter hit, down forward 2. He does have a high kick, but it's 20 frames. He does move forward a bit, quite a bit with it. Yeah, see? He has some decent range on his hop kick. Yeah, about a backdash and a half worth. 
Um, another uh, another thing that I used to hear ball players complain about is his low poking wasn't that good. Honestly, I think they're full of shit. He has down back three. He has one of those. He has a jab into a low poke. Oh yeah, he has a good down forward one also. But it is 14 frames. Alright. So we got all that out of the way, right? So here we go. Starting from the top. As always, we start with the jab. Single one jab. Left jab. 10 frames. Like most of the time. And plus one on block like most of the time. In the case of Bob, he's plus eight on hit. You can always start your offense with a jab, with a one jab, with most characters in the game. So, that's that, right? Nothing special there. Seven damage, it is a high. Yes, okay, so you got one one. Plus five. Uh, negative one on block. Plus uh, five, yeah, plus five on hit, negative one on block. And same thing on counter hit. So, the cool thing is he has a one one two string, right? But it is, it is kind of whatever because it's negative one on hit. This is one of those things that got nerfed, I think, from Tekken 6 going into Tag 2. In Tag 2, Bob players finish this string a lot less. As a matter of fact, I used to see Fab, NYC Fab, just do 1-1 one, one as a jab punch. He wouldn't even finish it. He would just do 1-1 one, one and take the frame advantage. Uh, but if you want to complete it, it is 24 damage. That is his uh, actual jab punch. Another one that uh, jab punch that Bob players do is 1-4 which I haven't gotten to yet, but that's another way to get, that's probably the preferred way. Rather than doing 1-1 one, one, as an actual block punish for a jab, you're probably gonna wanna do 1-4. One, uh, one, you get plus five. It does push back a bit, so people can backdash a lot of things, see? Instead of this, which is plus five, and he doesn't push uh, doesn't push back at all. So one backdash, all of a sudden he's still in range. Um, but yeah, so you wanna pick either 1-1-2 one, one, two for two more damage, 1-4 for a frame advantage with uh, off sacrificing too much damage, only two less damage. Or 1-1 one, one to sacrifice a lot of damage, but you're right in their face for plus five. And you could really force a better mix up that way. Those are the trade-off in regards to his jab punishes. All right, so 1-1-2 one, one, on block. It says here negative one. Is that true? I don't think that's true. Yeah, negative 12. So RB Norway just has a typo here. Negative 12 on block. The cool thing about 112 is, much like Mishima 112, it is hit confirmable. Very hit confirmable. Okay, not as hit confirmable as Mishima 112, but it is. It is definitely hit confirmable. It feels like you can't delay it as much as Mishima 112, though. Random guard. Okay, it's the window's tighter than than, than machine one wants to. Definitely tighter. I think you could, you can do it. Damn, maybe not. I think it is, but it's definitely hard. So maybe it's not hit, uh, regularly hit confirmable. It is definitely hit confirmable if you confirm your opponent with something. So like off of a sidestep, you do one one. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, the classic, the shit I've been showing you guys over and over again, right? Oh, I gotta. See? Easy. So you could definitely do that, do that whole thing. But as a straight up hit confirm, it seems quite difficult. Harder than I thought, actually. Uh, so, I mean, that's one way to use that move, but outside of that, it's kind of whatever. I would just stick with 1-1-1-4. One, 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 and only do 1-1-2 one, one, if it's for the kill. That's my personal opinion. Either way it goes, he does have 1-2. And uh, this is 17 damage, plus 3 on hit. And his 1-2 is actually negative 3, worse than usual, on block. And I know why, because he has an extension off of this. 1-2, one, 1 plus 2, which is negative 13 on hit. Spins on a normal hit, and on counter hit, starts juggling. So it's one of those you could fish for when people try to mash after your 1-2 pressure.
delay it too. Oh wow. If you don't delay it. With the delay you still beat up the jab. Look at this. You have to delay it to fish for the counter hit. I can't mash. Basically it jails. Okay. So it is not a counter hit string off of the one. It is a counter hit string off of the two. So if you want to use this to fish for the counter hit on the last hit, you have to delay it after the one two. Like that. Never do it as fast as possible. If you do it as fast as possible, it basically jails. You can't, uh, the opponent cannot input anything, nothing. They'll, they will just guarantee to block it, basically. I doubt he could even crouch it. Yeah, can't even crouch it. Yeah, I'm holding down. Can't crouch it. Can't do anything. So, delay it. What's up, video games? So, if you want to use that string, uh, fish for counter hit. Delay it, delay it, delay it. Now let's see how it tracks. If I delay it. Okay. See, that's still not enough of a gap to uh, jab through it. But I can sidestep it to my right, but not left. But the delay allows me to sidestep to the right. And it's a big whiff. And of course, on block, it's negative 13. I don't know what Bob's 13 I know what it is actually. That's his 13 frame punish. Okay, one of them at least. So it is negative 13 also. So keep that in mind. So if you're going against Bob, and you see a lot of this going on with the delay, sidestep right. Let me put a bit less of the delay in there and see what happens. Okay, so we got the delay. Okay, there it is. Okay, so there's a sweet spot on the delay. You get that sweet spot. There's no sidestepping this. But if there's a heavy delay, you could sidestep to your right. So, I mean, honestly, it's not much reward on normal hit. It's just 20 damage unless the wall's to your back. So, if you're going to take the shot and guess uh, sidestep right to your right, go for the launch. Like, make it pay off. Don't just sidestep and do nothing. Go for something big. What's up, Frozen Zerker? Oh, forward two three is the punch. There you go. I was just checking negative thirteen. That's all. Uh, anyway, so that's one two one plus two. We got one three, which goes into a low. We talked about this earlier. Uh, this is a natural combo, but it's actually negative five on hit. I did not know that. And then he has one three three, which is a mid negative fourteen knockback. Oh, counter hit. Uh, second hit. Counter hit combos into the third. Not on normal hit. Wow. He automatically steps back after connecting this. But if it's blocked, he doesn't step back. But if it connects, see, he hops back. He makes a little grunt sound and hops back. Weird. Odd move. I don't know if this used to, uh, if he had this before, and if he did, if it had different properties. Uh, this would seem shitty to me. Uh, I mean, it could be a decent round ender if negative 14 doesn't risk getting your launch. Because there is that nice little gap in there, and that delay, let's see. Okay, it interrupts block punishing on the low. The low hits me. I definitely cannot sidestep the last kick. Thanks for the follow, butt helper. If I block the low, I can't sidestep left. So basically, I should low parry that low. Or just block punch that shit properly, right? So that's the whole thing there. That low actually tracks the Bob's left pretty well. If you just go for the 1-3 by itself, 
Not bad. And then the one three is actually negative sixteen. So because they attached that third hit, they made that low really bad on block. Oh, that's that. Hello. Another thing about Bob I forgot to mention is uh, I don't know about Tag 2, but in Tekken 6, he had the longest jab range in the game. Now, we all know Gigas has that now, but uh, Bob might still have above average jab range. He might. Honestly, it looks good. It still looks really good. Look at this. This is really far back for a jab. I am holding forward with my jab, the lead jab, but. So it still looks good. Uh, I've been playing some Jin lately, pretty new to Tekken, so it's been fun trying to dismantle spammers and like Jin's a good character to do that with because he's uh, he has a really good array of pokes. Remember, Jin's down back four, basically his version of the stature kick. Really good low poke that puts you at I believe plus three on normal hit, juggle on counter hit. Really good low poke, really good. Only negative thirteen on block if I'm not mistaken. So that down back four is really good. it's just uh, slow. That's the only problem with it, but it has a lot of range too. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's 1-3-3. Three, three. It's kind of whatever. Uh, next, we got 1-4. I talked about this before, but that's the one that uh, you want to... That's that middle ground of frame advantage and damage for your jab punish. But it pushes the opponent back, where one backdash will escape most of your poke. Even like a down forward too, see? I'm backdashing myself, but like the you know, the opponent backdash is gonna be the same because it's both Bob, right? But he does have one down four. Ooh, thanks for the cheer. Who was that? Mansfield Games, a legend. Thanks for the cheer. Now one down four is uh I believe this is the actual jab into low that Bob players use, not one three. I don't think one three is used very often. See, this one's only negative 12. Only negative 12. Um, it is a natural combo. So if, you, if you're going for this and you happen to connect the jab, you'll get that low for free. On block, if you block the jab, you can low parry the low, of course. But the jab hits you, of course, I mean, even if it didn't combo on normal hit, typically when it comes to strings like this, you'd be unable to low parry the low, but it combos on normal hits, so that doesn't matter here. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's test the tracking on that low. Uh, Sidestepping is not good. Okay. So much like with the one down three, it tracks the step really well. But you can sidewalk it to your left, Bob's right, which is toward the move, which breaks the rule, right? <laughs> you want to sidestep away from the move. Another random cool thing about Bob that I just remembered is he has a unique crouch animation. You see that? How he puts his hand down on the floor. <laughs> I always found that at least to be cool about him. All right. So one down four is a pretty good move. Only negative 12, negative one on hit. Can he sidestep Yoshi's unblockable low? I swore I did it online once. Uh, I'm not sure. What you want to do against Yoshimitsu's low sword sweep is backdash. That's why the good Yoshi players only do it if you tech. Because if you tech, you lose the ability to sidestep and backdash. You just have to deal with that shit. You have to crush it or something. about one down four next is two standing two jab it's also 10 frames for bob plus six on hit zero on block uh you cannot lead his two jab because he has forward two as an actual move his two jab goes to two one which is another optimist for a uh, jab punish here plus four pushes back just like one four so you would not want to use this as a jab punish uh this is plus four on hits negative four on block Two, one. Natural combo. And that is high mid, actually, so th this is this is actually useful. Uh, 
jab strings that go high to mid like that, there's and that are only like net that are only like negative like two, three, or four on block like this, tend to be pretty useful. You'd be surprised. Especially uh in the clutch during round closures. Cause it'll catch people that try to duck like strings with highs. It'll check them if they're not fast. If they're not fast, it'll check them. Although his has quite a delay in the second hit. But I'm thinking more like Jin's 2 1 or shit like that, really. But he has that this fourth hit, 2 1 4, which is only negative 4 on block. I believe that kick is a jungle starter, right? Okay, it's not. What about counter hit? On the kick by itself. No, it's not. I think this used to start juggles. Well, it knocks down, so he probably gets uh, down one for free. That's probably free, right? Let's see. Yeah, that was free. You might get even better than that. So I do know the reason this is safe is because you could, uh, well, you cannot interrupt it, but you can sidestep that, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can sidestep that, so you're right. Ooh. Punishing that is going to be weird, though. If you happen to sidestep that, he keeps moving forward. So you're going to end up in a weird axis position. So you gotta like delay it or hold forward a little bit and then launch them. No, that was too slow. There it is. Oh, that was a counter hit. Oh, that's a counter hit too. Oh my god, that's weird. It's a little, it's pretty awkward to punish that. Keep that in mind. Uh, you could definitely armor through it, right? Yeah, you can armor through it. If you can exchange your jabs, you can armor through it too. So there's that. I was just curious about something. So that does crush uh, Cross Chap. Wow. His two jab tracks at his right side pretty well. off of the jab. What about zero? So off of like zero or off of like a jab, it's a little awkward to get around that. Interesting. But when I put him at negative three off of the one two jab, I was able to sidestep that clean. This could just be a boss specific thing. These things get weird with Tekken. Uh, I probably would not use that as like a reliable tracker. That's more like a cherry on top kind of thing. <sighs> kind of like Dragon's down forward one tracking. If you block, if you block a Dragon's down forward one and he does another one right after, you all of a sudden can't sidestep it. It's weird. All right. So that's two one. Doesn't Bob have a bad step? I'm not sure. Does he? Bob didn't used to. He used to have a really good size step. It's supposed to catch his hair curls. That's why it tracks them. Eh. Yeah, Bob is like, despite visuals, despite him being fat, he has a small hurt box. One of the reasons I hated Tekken 6 so much is because my friend used Bob. He decided to pick Bob in a self-aware situation he was like, fuck it, I just want to use a cheap character kind of thing going on. He knew what he was doing. He didn't like Bob, but he picked him. And I ran, especially playing as Marta, who was awful in Tekken 6 because he had all these characters that have all the, that gain all these like mid-ducking moves. Not crushing. I don't like calling them crush. Those, these moves that duck mids like lightning screws and shit like that. All of a sudden, a lot of ca really good characters in the cast got these moves. It wasn't just characters like Ling Zhao anymore. And then I'm using Marduk, who they didn't account for any of this. 
They didn't give him any, like, any buffs to account for that. And all of his good buttons just get fucking decimated by these moves. Like, Bob's down back one plus two went under mids. That went under mids. Uh, this sometimes went under mids while standing uh, two. Uh, this definitely went under mids. All sorts of fucked up shit. There'll be times where I would get behind him. He would do something that recovered ducking, and I would go for a mid, and it would whiff. That is why, if you go from Tekken 6 Marduk to Tag 2 Marduk, his down forward one animation, completely different. It's the same amount of frames. Same frames. Same damage, same thing on block. Basically, the same move. Still tracks the Marduk's left. The one thing that they changed, they changed the animation. You know what, what the animation did? It gave it a good hitbox. His down forward one. And then another new move they gave him had a really good hitbox. Forward one plus two. So he had two good mid options with good hitboxes to deal with a lot of that shit. So anyway. Yeah. Fuck Bob. Uh, yeah, so 214 uh, seems alright. He might get something better than uh, down one. Like, I don't know what else is grounded. We have, like, uh... Nah, down one does more damage. One more damage. So yeah, if he has something better, maybe a bot player would know. He's still out running three plus four. That looks too slow. That's too slow. Uh, if Marduk were in second seven, what would be your idea for his rage drive? That's a weird question. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, something that gives him an un unbreakable tackle. Maybe. Anyway, next is... That's 214. We went through that. Negative 4 on block. Knocks down on normal and counter hit. Uh, one thing I did not check. So, second hit, counter hit gives him that. So that's another thing that makes it good as a mid-check. The 2-1, you get that little bonus of if you happen to check them with a counter hit on the mid, you get the kick guaranteed. And then you can tack on a down one for like a total of 50 damage. Uh, 45 damage. 46 damage. 14 if you down one. Yeah, 46 damage. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Alright, so we got that out of the way. Next, we got standing three. So his standing three is really stupid looking. Sweet chin music. Uh, he looks like he does he kicked them off axis? Is that what's going on? Or is he moving to the right? I can't tell. But whatever. It's the start of a string. Uh you might get back three after the third hit. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, two more damage. There you go. So, uh, 45, 46, 47, 48 damage. Not bad. So, they give uh, back three is now one of those, like, flipping moves for Oki, huh? Alright. Or is that a new move? I don't even know. Uh, so we got two on four. So, three, four is the string. And I'm pretty sure there's a third hit here. Isn't there, like, a four hit string with this? Well, this is a natural combo. Start up is 18 frames on this. Forces crouch. Counter hit knockdown. High mid. Ne only negative send. Force crouch. That's not bad. Crouch. Let's 
he's a track to his right side pretty well. Can I interrupt it? This is a good move. I think this is a good move. And the range seems uh, not amazing, but not terrible either. Yeah, see? I think it's a good move. It looks like it would probably spike during juggles too, right? That looks like it would floor break. Oh, but it doesn't do the uh, spike that makes the opponent have to hold back. That's a regular spike. So that might be decent for jugglers or for Oki. That might be. I don't know. I don't think I see this in jugglers. I don't know. It's not a bad move. It is on the slow side. But it's not a bad move. Especially since it tracks to his right side. And most characters won't punish that really hard. Geese with meter. The meter characters, when they have meter, will punish that pretty hard. And like Lee. I don't think anybody else has like an amazing 10 frame while standing option, right? Lay's not around. So. Alright, so that's 3 4. Uh, and apparently there's a lot of uh, active frames on the 4, so you can make this at best negative 5 on block, force crouch plus 9. So, I mean, you know, I don't think you're gonna be able to account for that, but it's there. All right, so next we got standing four. Now this is basically a magic four, but it's 13 yeah. frames, right? So I don't know what the conversion yeah. is. Oh, dash that? Is it that easy? Not from the tip, though. Not from the tip. Up close, though. Up four, one plus two. Okay. There you go. Thank you. That is easy conversion. Uh, who is that? Dynamic escape. What's going on? Juan. Punish Juliana. Oh, shit. The legend Juliana. Good looking out, Juliana, for, for the calculator, by the way. I got uh, basically an above perfect score because he added five points to everybody's score on, on it. So out of 20 points, I got 22. <laughs> so good looking out, amigo. Oh, wow. Damn. So Bob is one of those fuckers with an easy conversion off of his Magic 4, huh? I mean, his Magic 4 range is kind of shit, though, because he kicks at an angle. See the way he's kicking towards his left side? It's, like, crooked. So his, uh... And it's on a slower side, so it's not really... It's actually kind of a shitty Magic 4. But he does get an easy conversion with a uh, one of those two. So what you want to do... Delicious. The moment you input a four, hold one of the jab buttons. So you'll be prepared to do up forward one plus two to convert. And then whatever the fuck is it, that? What is it? Uh, so it's that, right? Up forward one plus two, four. And then you convert into whatever the hell the juggle is. Do you think I should try picking up Steve? If you are interested in Steve, by all means. He's definitely not an easy character to use. But I think he's cool as hell. What's up? Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Wekuzi. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, I've seen NBC do the headbutt into kick to convert. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yo, man, you're a soul cop player. Metal Gear Donut. No, I am from New York City. I am from Manhattan, Lower East Side. So I am like five to 10 minutes, depending on how fast you walk away from the old Chinatown Fair. Chinatown Fair is still there, but it's trash now. Some new owners that don't, you know, don't care about us FGC, us filthy ass FGC people. <clears throat> uh, why am I looking here? So his standing four, I mean, it's not great, but Actually, he has con uh, spring at him. I, I think this is the spring I thought was with uh, his standing three, but it's actually standing four three. Yeah, that's what I thought he would do out of the standing three. Okay, so it's actually up from the standing four. Okay, that fucks up his conversion. If he commits to that, all right. Standing four by itself is negative nine plus seven. Oh no, oh, not bad. Plus seven will push back, but it's there. So 
Fourth degree is not a natural combo. Okay, it's not a natural combo. Uh, negative eight, still safe if you go for the follow up. I mid. And a three plus four is also safe. My guess is you can interrupt that last hit. Dead, not even on counter hit. Okay, that knocks down. Knocks down. No matter what, that knocks down. Negative five to zero on block on the last hit. That last flipping shit. Five active frames. All right, let's see how this looks. Okay, so it's Magic Four has no tracking. The second kick only tracks step. So if you sidestep. Oh wow, that window to. Okay, if you're trying to sidestep without pressing anything and react, your window to whip punish him off of that is pretty tight. So you're gonna want to like jab. If you try to go for anything slower than a jab, you're gonna get eaten up. Although it's only like, it's not a big deal because that second kick on counter hit does not guarantee the third hit. And like I thought, you could uh, hit him out of that. Oh boy, 13 frames. Oh, 14 should exchange. Yeah, so there's a 13 frame gap, 14 frame exchanges. What the hell, slow. That's 12. Uh, do you think... Oh, yeah, I read that already. Nice to catch you. Now, what's up, Stratosphere? How's it going? Chaotic Magic Card. What's going on? on the legend. Chaotic Magic Card. All right, so... 4, 3, 3 plus 4. That's kind of whatever. Uh, I think the standing 4 bite stuff's all right. 4, 3, 3 plus 4. I don't... What about during jungles? What are you doing? I wonder if that spike makes the last hit guaranteed. If that, if that spike makes the last hit guaranteed, that might not be, that might be useful. I don't know. I'd have to look up uh, a Bob combo video or something. Or combo list. Yeah, that looks guaranteed. You sometimes use that as a combo and an infinite stage. There you go. There you go. But it's one of those where yeah. you're gonna have to let's see something. Yeah, you're gonna have to know uh, if it, if you're using that at the end of a tailspin, corkscrew, or whatever. You're gonna have to know how to run up neutral uh, standing four, like Jack does that, and a couple of other characters like Law does that too. You gotta run up, you have to stick out to neutral and press four with uh, as uh, small a gap as possible. Otherwise, you're gonna get this, and that's not what you want. So I don't know what like a long ass juggle would be right now to like show you guys that in an actual Bob juggle, but you get the idea, right? You're gonna like tail spin them and then you're gonna be like back here and then you're gonna have to run up and do that. If you wanna use that at the end of your juggle. Alright, so that's four, three, three, plus four. Oh, let's test the tracking on the last thing. I think I did that. Yeah. Fire doesn't track, right? Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, no, definitely not. Maybe, maybe not so good in the neutral. Definitely not so good in the neutral. Just use the standing four by itself in the neutral. All right, next we got one plus two. Oh, of course, this. One plus two. Natural combo. One plus two, one plus two. And the first hit, he can go into the row if you hold forward, which is not stated here, or is it? It is stated here, okay. Um, according to RB Norway, one plus two forward roll is wow. Huh? Hold on a second. RB Norway is showing with after stance ends. Okay, so according to RB Norway. 
if you let the uh, stance end without doing anything and then go into because it's a stance that roll is a stance it has like two or three options or something right uh, if you let the roll complete and go right back into standing and then you press something you recover crouching by the way you are at negative six like the Tekken bot says it does force crouch uh, on hits on block your negative 19 if you commit to the stance options on block this is plus four and uh, on hit it's plus 17 19 frames 23 frames 23 frames 20 frames so these options are all really slow uh, 29 frames I don't know if he has anything else. So 19 frames seems to be the fastest. This, this is like gimmicky shit, really. Uh, oh, we're coming across. So that's 19. If he's at, I was it's plus four. And I need 18 frames. My while standing three is... What is 17 frames. He's beating me out. Plus four. Plus four. Plus That means it's 15. And he's beating out my uh, 17. I don't have 15 attempts, do I? I do. Alright. So if people mash uh, while standing 15 frame launcher, I guess, that will counter hit on block. Uh, nothing is guaranteed on hit, obviously. Neither on counter hit. Counter hit, same as on hit. Just plus, uh, if with the roll, plus 17. Without the roll, it's zero. Negative 13 on block. an example of what I was talking about earlier with 4, 3, 3 plus 4. So that was, what was it, 60 damage into 11 damage. It resets the scaling. Even though it doesn't show up as a combo, that is guaranteed. There's a couple of examples of that in the game. I think Bob has another combo that's like that. Like, there are certain combos where you spike the opponent down with something and then you hit them with something before they could do anything about it. Uh, Gigas. Gigas is, like, big on that because his dot 4, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2, the fucking ground pound shit. The first two hits combo, and then the last hit doesn't combo, but it, it does combo, it's guaranteed. But it does this, what's going on here, where it resets the scaling to 80%, and always adds 16 damage at the end of his juggles. That's why he does so much fucking damage, Gigas. He always gets that, no matter how long his juggle was, he gets that 16 damage in the end, if you end it with that. So, that's the same thing going on here, where that last hit is always gonna do... Theoretically, if you were able to do 100 hits before that and end the combo with that, it's always going to do 11 damage, is what I'm saying. There is no 100 hit combo, normally at least. You know, maybe one of those weird ass wall splat things that people do along the side of the wall, but <laughs> outside of that, you're not going to see anything like that. So yeah, thanks for that combo, Exodia Lover. Yeah, so they, yeah, that was 60 plus 11 damage. That's 71 damage off of this hop kit. That's good. Uh, I, I guess I should say that out loud. Now it's up forward three, down two, three, down forward one, down three, four, and then just dash four, three, three, plus four. That's actually really good damage for a hot kick, although his hot kick is slow. This is wall combo. Yeah, most wall combos have that trick. Oh, see? I'm so slow there. Uh, what was it? Down two, three? Yeah, it's not too hard. It's just the trick is run up, neutral, 4, 3. You have to get the timing, the amount of dash you have to do. You have to get all that perfect. Yeah. You can probably do the same off of this too, right? Oh, but the hot, his hop kick is actually above average in damage. That's another reason why it's so high. 20 damage for a hop kick. Most characters' hop kicks do like 15 or under. Unless it's like a double hitting hop kick, 
and then that will like fuck up the scaling. Typically. Typically, not always. Uh, Alright, so that's 1 plus 2. We went through that. Negative 13 on block. I don't think it tracks. has kind of like a wide hitbox off towards his right. Maybe that could just be a boss specific thing, but I wouldn't call that track. Alright, so then we got 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2. This is a slow move. 19? 19, 19 This knocks back. It does wall splat. 38 damage. Uh, knocks back quite far, actually. Yeah, that's pretty far. It's a lot. That's good wall carry if you just hit people in the future with that. Uh, but it is, oh my god, it is negative 20. You can delay it a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, no counter hit properties. Yeah, this move sucks. <laughs> uh, I would, if you're gonna, I'm trying to think of when it would be a good idea to use this move. And I gotta be real with you guys, seeing that it's negative 20, I struggle to come up with a good reason to use this move. The second hit, that is. The first hit, I don't know, maybe you could get fancy with it. It's super delayable, I guess, so you can, like, fuck with people that swing after the first hit, but you don't get any counter hit properties, and it's still negative 20. That's not good. Ooh, and, uh, that move sucks. Uh, he can't go back out of it, apparently. If you hold back, same thing. Does he have the robo gun at no, he doesn't. But if you go back, you can't. You don't have any of those, like, roll moves. But you do recover crouching still. According to Arbino, you go back. It's negative 36 on block and negative 23 on hit. <laughs> so they can't chase you down for it. It's kind of like Kazumi when she does the 3-2 knockdown and then she does the tiger. She's actually punishable if she does that. It's a lot more damage but and it's guaranteed, but she's punishable. There you go, I gotta punish. 40 damage. Oops. There you go. Punish. So you can chase that down. In case you were wondering, you fight uh, a lot of like low level newer bot players or people that are new to tech and they're playing bot. I've definitely seen them do this shit, thinking like, especially if it's like the start of the round. They're like, oh yeah, that's the safe way to go about it. It's like, no, you just saw it. Now, your character may not get anything amazing for it, but you can definitely punish that. You can definitely chase that down. And at worst, you might not get a punish, but you'll be able to beat out their next option if you dash up to their face, as long as you don't fuck up your timing. Yeah, it's not a very useful move. I don't even think it's good as a round ender. It's too risky. I th you, you, you're going to close out the round. Let's say, all right, you got the opponent down to rage health. Even if you have a full health bar, your opponent's down to rage health. You're going to put yourself risk putting yourself at negative 20 on a block. Like, nah. The, I wouldn't recommend. I mean, you know, it, it, that doesn't, it, it, it can work, obviously, right? The, the, the logic is there. It's just, it's too risky. It's too risky to flip a coin on, on something like that, you know? I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it's uh, a good idea. Uh, the jumping punish demo. Man. What I do know is I've seen people after a screw, like you just said, I've seen people uh, do one plus two roll forward and then force the mix up after a, after a jump. I've definitely seen that. Uh, if you think that's worthwhile, I don't know. I'll have to, when I, whenever the hell that goes through the roll moves, we'll see. I know the low starts jumps, right? Here. This low, I believe, starts juggling. I don't know what the juggle would be. Ooh. But whatever. I'll get to that when I get to that. So, that's the 1 plus 2 stuff. Next, we got forward 2. 
which has one extension, forward two, three. This is his actual 12 frame punish. This has really good range. So it's also a good whiff punisher. If you need something fast, and you're like, you're kind of like back here. You know, you see good pop, uh, I've seen, I've definitely seen good bot players use this shit all the time as a whiff punish. It walls flats, it, uh, you know, it's good. But it's bad on block, so make sure you hit, because it is negative 15 on block. The first hit is a uh, plus three. It's only negative eight on on uh, on block for the first hit. Uh, I don't think there's any special properties on the kick by itself. Yeah, no, nothing, no special properties on the hit. This is just something like if you're gonna use it, fucking hit with it. Make sure you hit with it. Negative fifteen. Let's test the tracking. I definitely, I don't, I would not use this as a tracking move, but let's test it anyway. Let's not test it with a uh, jab anymore. I've been doing that, and I think that's been fucking up my perception of tracking. So I'm gonna test that negative three for Bob. It looks like it should track to that side, but it doesn't. No tracking at all. Man. I don't know what his 15 frame punish is. <sighs> 14. Forward two, there's not much else to say about that. Block negative 12 block punish high though. If they recover crouching, you're not gonna get it, obviously. Uh, and a lot of range and wall splat. So it's another thing, like a lot of characters you like to space up the wall like this with this much range. You should keep that locked and loaded in the back of your mind. Alright, next is forward three. Ah, this is a uh, an old Oki tool. I don't think people use this for Oki anymore, right? Now he's got the uh, back three Oki. This used to be like a way to end your struggles with a spike. Uh, but these these axe kicks still tend to be decent. Sometimes. I don't know if Bob's is. Nah, Bob's is kind of shitty. Because the thing about these axe kicks is they have a lot of uh, active frames. I don't know if you can see it on the Tekken bot. You see it says uh, forward three, mid 21 frame startup. One out of seven under ACT. Seven active frames. What that means is, this could be at worst negative four on block, at best plus two on block. So the thing about axe kicks like this is, usually they're not this bad on block, like negative four is kind of bad. Uh, but they always have like a couple of active frames. So if you use it as an Oki tool, I gotta send them to tech. What's a good way to test this? This is really something you're gonna do like you would use at the wall. Maybe not so much mid stage, what I'm about to show here. Um, Send him the tech. Either way, uh, left or right, doesn't matter. Right? Let's see, uh, what's a knockdown I can do? Uh, how close are they? Let's see. Oh, that's not. You can't tech that, idiot. <laughs> you can't tech that, idiot. Alright, uh, you're not gonna get it off of that. What? Oh, I picked the wrong thing, sorry. Teching is up here. Uh, just to show you guys. Negative two instead of negative four there, right? Because you see it's usually negative four. So if you get this timing right, Ugh, it's hard to do because it's mid stage. This is easy to do at the wall. You could like test after a lot of your wall combos. You could do some uh, tests, uh, set the opponent to tech, see what happens when they block that ass kick. Keep in mind that off of a wall slump situation, depending on what wall combo you do, uh, the opponent can delay their tech slightly. It's like the only situation in the game that you could do that. So that could fuck with the timing. But this axe kick, could, you can definitely get this to be like zero. You'd be surprised on block. Not great though. Uh, 15 frames is down one plus two. Oh, that shit? <laughs> it says 14 with a question mark. Uh, it's one, down one pursuit one. Oh, down one pursuit two one. Weird. So that is a 15 frame punch. What a stupid. Didn't he use to supercharge automatically off of that? <laughs> what a dumb move. All right. Did I miss any questions? Uh, 
One plus two, four row is good after roll four combo. Yep. Uh, you do the low, then whilst any two, one, then screw it up. There you go. Thank you. All right. Bob can't lock until negative 18 frames. I know that. I said that already. Uh, nope. Down back one plus two is 18. 18. 18. <laughs> this character is so lame. Oh, that's counter property. I didn't know that. All right. Uh, so yeah, we were talking about uh, forward, two, forward three. Yeah, forward three. All right, so his forward three. Uh, you know. Yeah, I was trying to show you guys that you can use it off of a tech situation at the wall. Maybe uh, whenever it probably won't be today because this, this is gonna be a multi part like always. When I do Bob, Bob's wall stuff, I'll go back to this loop for sure and see if I can find a good setup for it. But it might not be, you know, big deal. There's probably better stuff you can do. It does have an extension though. This mid as this mid boot. Boot. This is forward three four. It is a counter hit combo. Not on normal hit. It's negative eleven, but it pushes back. So it's pretty much safe. Maybe Gigas could reach that. Maybe not. Probably not, actually. Uh, but that's pretty much safe. Negative 11 with that much pushback. Yeah. Big kick by itself. Woo! This isn't bad. So, it might not be bad. Let me not get ahead of myself here. I mean, it's not going to track. I don't know why I'm bothering. That, but... Yeah, thought so. This this is a common thing with Bob. I'm noticing his uh, strings have these big ass gaps in them that can really fuck with shit. You can probably jab and throw that. No, you cannot. You cannot jab and throw that. But you can sidestep it. So this is really like you got to get them to want to swing after that axe kick. That kind of makes the axe kick good though. The fact that it interrupts jabs. It's not a lost cause, cause then it just makes it just makes this move better, which is already it's already decent, slow odd, like I said. But negative four, you can still move around at negative four, and swinging with like a jab at negative four is not a bad bet. And then you get them to swing after that, all of a sudden, then you got like this boom, this big ass boom. Uh, if their back is to the wall and wall splats, although I'm sure he loses that pushback, but it's only negative eleven, so. It's only that side step. Being able to side step that second kick is only really a big issue, I think, if you're just like spamming it. Like, you know, you're using it more than you should. You gotta earn using something like this. Set it up. Get a read first. And then use it very sparingly. Very, very sparingly. Very sparingly. Uh, I wish down three had. Down back three had more range. You know, down back three. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's not amazing, but. That's an awkward animation. He moves to his right, but that's not that's good rainbow for a low. That's fine. You're getting greedy. <laughs> Fuck Bob. <mom>. Anyway. <laughs> um so yeah, that's uh what was that? That was forward forward three to four, right? That's forward three to four. Crumple stun, what's the juggle? Any uh, any of you Bob players out there now? Like if I wanna convert that, is it dash up back to two or something? Yeah. Or something better. Ooh, this is rough, actually. There we go. You can get a jab off of there, right? By the way, for those of you who don't know, this back two punishes, float punishes Eddie's back three, three on block. This will float him and you'll get a juggle. Because it's fast enough. Uh, forward, forward, three. Oh, okay. I don't know what the BNB is, yeah. but if forward, forward, three reaches, then we know we're good, right? Nope. Yeah. I mean, I got the back, too. It's, it's kind of hard unless you're right in their face. Yeah. If you go right into that, that's pretty easy. Down, three, four. What about down, two, three? I'm dashing too much. No, he has to dash. Definitely has to dash. At least from here. Yeah, 
So down 3-4 seemed good. Down 3-4. Yeah, dash down 3-4. <laughs> B2. So dash down 3-4 is it. If you want easy juggle on the down 3-4 seemed to do pretty decent damage. So it's not like it's not like you're sacrificing a lot. That's an easy conversion. I would go with that into whatever the hell else comes after. He may have better options, but that just seems easy to me. It seems like, you know, it's foolproof, if you will. That's a good way to put it, foolproof. All right. So that's a good move, in my opinion. Risky if you're bad at using it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Next, we got his homing move, forward four. This is a counter hit hit throw, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, this is actually one of his coolest looking moves, in my opinion. It was always a counter hit hit throw, and I think it was always his homing move also. Uh, 16 frames. That's pretty. That's good. It's pretty fast. It's fast enough. 16 frames. It is a high. Young P with the. Oh man, the average viewers are piling on now, huh? Good looking now, Young P. Hope he's doing well. Still being weird, right? So anyway, this has always been a solid homing move, I think. It does have two active frames, but fucking whatever. What is it all about? It is only negative six, so not too bad. Not really any pushback. A tiny bit, but not enough to really negate that negative six. So you got to be careful if this is blocked. Be careful with your sidestep because, like, jabs are going to hit you and maybe some other stuff will hit you too. At negative six, you will not be able to sidestep jabs. You will not. I repeat, you will not be able to sidestep jabs. No matter if it's a... Thanks for the follow. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Rips Cousin. Uh, at negative five, that's where it starts. You're unable to sidestep jabs. So at negative six, you're definitely unable to sidestep jabs. You're cable guy. Thanks for the follow. All right. So this is a good tool. Oh, on normal hit, it knocks down like this. This makes me think that he has a way to convert this if you are at a walled stage. Let's test it, shall we? It knocks it to his right side, right? Get ready for the next <sighs> What's up, Thunder? Usually see you chilling in uh, juice boxes, chat. Thunder, Dream Center is going on there by the cable guy. Awesome screen. Oh, thanks, man. Big Bob screen. Yep. Nice beard. I got a beard? I got like a fucking patch thing going on right now. I can't quite get an Iris beard. Ruthless Zero, I've definitely seen you around. What's up? So we're gonna take this to the wall right now and test this. So I need a, him facing me, which means I need to knock down. Alright. So what was it? Forward four. Oh, well, he gets a free follow up, but no pickup, huh? Does anybody know any tricks here? What's up, Minute? Uh, I don't suppose anybody knows any any pickups here. Back three. I'm looking for a bigger pickup than that. I, uh, back three is guaranteed. That's fine. Uh, no, I'm not going to see. I'm not going to any any uh, any tournaments. I don't travel. I'm too poor for that shit, man. I'm about to graduate, which means I got to pay off my debt, my student debt. Fortunately, I don't have a crazy amount of students that way. And so he's not one of those that gets like a, a solid conversion for of this kind of hit. Right? Is that? That's the follow-up to that. Usually when you see this, you get like weird-ass conversions like Dragon Off's up 4-4 four, four, or his back 3 plus 4. Paul's back 1-2, he gets like a demo man. If, his, if the wall's to his side. I don't, I don't, uh, down 3-4, I tried that. I tried that, Milo. The down 3 connected, but it didn't pick up. See? Even if he's facing me. Ugh. See, it knocks him away. So yeah, that kind of knockdown, it won't allow him to get any conversion off of it. Oh well. I don't feel bad for him. Fuck Bob. But maybe he might get he might get something unique. Like maybe a uh, 
should have tested his push switch on stage. Maybe like a down one would give him good Oki because it might not push him away. But anywhere on the stage, normal hits. Jim, Jim Kusham, I think, for the follow. Uh, our normal hit anywhere in the stage, you get a free back three. I'm guessing you have to dash. Yep. Oh, no, you don't have to dash. Oh, that floats like that. That floats like that. Why does that float like that? No, what the fuck? Why did it float like that? You guys saw that, right? I'm not crazy. What the fuck? Am I... What the... Why did that float like that? All right, we're going back to the wall stage. It's supposed to backflip. Get ready for the next battle. I just kind of assumed that no matter what, what timing I would hit the back three, it would cause them to flip. But apparently, if you don't delay your follow-up, you get a float uh, with back three. We might have something here. Ready for some uh, exclusive Manny tech? I'm sure pop players know this already, though, right? Oh, get me a conversion, damn it. Give me a conversion. Ah, uh, it doesn't flow high enough. Down two. Yeah. Doesn't flow high enough. What's up, so crates? Uh, anybody got any ideas? Yoshimitsu, that was a cool, uh, close like that because the water's slippery. Um, uh, that Yoshimitsu trailer was pretty good. Motherfucker steals his soul with his super. I'm looking forward to some conversation. I really hope it turns out to be a good game. Get ready for I'll definitely be trying it out, for sure. Like, I actually skipped, uh, buying Soul Calibur 4 and 5. Like, my friend bought them both and just kind of borrowed his copy. I was kind of like off the Soul Calibur train, but like the last time Aris was streaming the Dolphin version of Soul Calibur, so I, I went back and gave that a shot and I really got into it. It was really fun. I wasn't any good, obviously. But... Alright, um, so that's, uh, I mean, 4 4 is still a really good move. Guaranteed follow. You don't even need a dash, apparently. But you might have to for smaller characters, but guaranteed uh, 30. What the fuck? The flow gives him less damage, too. <laughs> 70% instead of 80% on the follow. So you're always gonna want to dash up and get. Uh, 16? Yeah, you're always gonna want to do that little dash and get get that follow up. I'm pretty sure that's still guaranteed, even though it doesn't combo. I mean, you can always test it on yourself to see, right? Oh, it's back. Oh, that's another pickup I should have tried. Too late now. Even though it doesn't combo, I'm pretty sure it's still guaranteed. Yep, yeah, see? Can't even get up. So, do it a little bit delayed with a dash against 16 damage instead of 14 damage. That float, for whatever reason, causes less damage. Tekken has always had a weird rule where if you stay on the ground, you take more damage, but when you're in the process of getting up, you're still guaranteed to be hit for a small, uh, uh, short window. Longer in the older games, because you could hold back and roll and get floated for a juggle. But, that hit will do less damage, skill damage. That still seems to be the case here. If you stay down, you take like 80%. But if you hold back to get up, you'll take like 70% on the way up. Until you're able to block or whatever, right? That appears to be the case here. Uh, alright, so, uh, let's see. That was forward four. Forward four is still a really good move. It's an anti sidestep poke tool. Because it is 16 frames, so people could totally sidestep and block it, of course. But if you're doing shit like, um, I'll show you guys right now. Well, since I got the big host, I should explain this again, like always. Check this out. Here's a little pro tip for you guys. Polygon tip for the block. No matter what your character is, if you have a uh, natural combo string that is 15 frames or faster 15 frames is the limit you can do something like a poke or you know a jab into a sidestep input the first hit of that string and you'll be able to confirm the string off of a whiff and uh, 
my example is, uh, is that a natural combo? Uh, what's a natural combo I could do that? Time? Let's do it with forward. Let's do this with forward two. That, I mean, that's on the fast side, so you can, you can also visually confirm it with. I like to do this with like 15 frames and spinning all over myself. Or 13 frames. Let's do it with. Uh, okay, that's actually a natural combo. Like, you're probably not going to want to do it with this, but just as an, as an example. Like, that's not hit confirmable. Normally, right? The ultimate version of this would be Kazumi's and Heihachi's down forward one two. So I'm gonna explain this again. I recorded the first one is a stand jab into a block. The second one is stand jab, stand jab, block. Right? So if I sidestep and hit down forward one, right, just automatically, without confirming anything. difficult to do with slower moves that's why I'm saying 15 frames is the limit for this because jazz recovers super fast you also have to have a good sidestep on your character for this obviously. see you can turn it into a hit confirm by making them whip just like that you could do that without a sidestep you could do that with a back dash also but it's super effective off of a sidestep uh, you definitely want to learn depending on your character some characters uh, utilize that better than others Maybe Bob I don't think he's super great at that the thing about Bob is you have a 12 frame a strong 12 frame uh, if they just whiff a jab you can on reaction do in my opinion consistently do 12 frame or faster if you do anything slower than 12 frame trying to whip punish on reaction uh, just a whiff single jab it's probably not gonna happen right so let, you can test that like this too you can just sidestep without pressing anything and then when you see the second jab see that's 12 frames and it's really hard to do there you go see that's like that's at least my limit maybe if you're really sharp and really good at this kind of thing you can do it with 13 frames thanks for the follow illingsworth uh, so this is super strong with any characters that have good pokes, especially 13 frame pokes. Miguel. Uh, Miguel has, you could confirm down forward one suit for 30 damage with Miguel doing this trick. Uh, Kazumi, Heihachi, and Claudio has a really fucked up one. Claudio's down forward, his twin pitches is down forward one suit. It's 15 frames, so you have to like, like twitch your sidestep, really, to get, the, to get, to get it to punish the jab, but... You get a 15 frame twin pisses, very high damage launcher, and on block, the down forward one is only negative two. So you can totally with Claudio sidestep down forward one all day long, and the moment they press something, bop, bop, you get a launch. Trust me, it's worth learning. And then eventually you want to level that up to learning off of a back dash, confirming, the, confirming in the same way, confirming that they swung with something. Off of a back dash, uh, you know, doing that kind of stuff. Remember, the, the trick is, to sidestep or backdash and commit to the first button of the string. Commit, as long as it's safe, commit to the first button of the string. The safer it is, the, uh, the safer the first of the string is, the better this whole thing is for poking. So the reason I brought all that shit up is the counter to that is homing moves because the idea is you're sidestepping and committing to the button, right? So if I notice that my opponent is doing this thing, that's when, like, semi-fast homing moves come into play. Fast homing moves work, too, obviously, but 16-frame homing moves, it, it, it's especially important for that because 16 frames is too slow to stop sidestep block. Even off of a plus-one situation where he is going to come back to 18 frames, it's not going to stop sidestep block, which is the other thing you can do, obviously. It's not going to stop that. But it'll stop the sidestep down forward one style from confirmation and shit like that. What up, Crooks? It's been a while. Uh, did I miss anything? I have an old Soul Calibur 6 C3. 6 is really good, I agree. Still no Koreans and Nos for Soul Calibur 6. That's random. Oh, Korean characters? I'm sure there's gonna be one like Juan Sung Young or one of them. Rhyme Check, thanks for. Oh, that's a good name. I like that. Rhyme Check, thanks for the follow. Uh, Windows 98, yep. 
Eight characters left before the character set screen is full. Really? They, they already announced how many characters they're going to put in? Uh, all right. So, good. so, yeah. I explain all that because the best counter to that specifically is obviously homing moves. Even if they are, they are on the slower side. Because then... If I try to side step and put down for one, you get the counter hit. Even if they're high. You follow? See, I'm particularly mediocre at that. I started getting good at that when I started playing as Kazumi. Because you have to do that with Kazumi to make the most of her. If not, then you're just gonna what? You're gonna guess down forward one suit randomly? I mean, you can do that too. Thanks for the follow, Russian the Die. Good name. Uh, you're gonna just do that random down forward one twos. That's 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 as far as you're gonna go with her down forward one two. That shit is an amazing poke. Down forward one. Make the most out of that shit, right? And then I was doing it with Miguel also when I was trying him out. All right. Uh, four four is also a tailspin move. Yeah. Okay. I did not know that. So you got that too. 14 damage tailspin off of the first hit post launch. So if you happen to hit somebody out the err, and they do like a sidestep hop kick, you will get a juggle out of it. That's a nice little bonus for him. Okay, so 4-4 four, four is a good move. <laughs> Counter hit hit throw. Next, we have forward 1 plus 2, which they turn into his armor move. Now this used to be, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this used to be launch punish bow in Tekken 6, right? I don't know about Tag 2, but I think this used to be negative 15 or 16. Now it's only negative 13. And it has four active frames? Five active frames? Really? Wow. Five active frames. I didn't know that. That's a weird thing. But uh, yeah, negative 13. If you get the last active frame, it's negative nine. I wouldn't count on it. Uh, it's, you're using it as an armor. Yeah. Knocks down on normal and counter hit. Nice chunk of damage, too. And this is actually on the fast side. 15 frames. Fast mid armor move that's not launch punishable on block. This is a good armor move. Pretty good. Move. Usually armor moves are like slow if they're high but safe. Or they're mid, still kind of slow, but they're like they have some sort of good reward. Something like that. Uh, this is mid, unsafe, but not super unsafe, and fast. Very fast. So uh, I, I think it's pretty good. Let's see if it tracks. call that a track. Yeah. He's got a big yeah. belly, so you're yeah. a little bit to the, le to the left, I guess. Alright, so that's forward one plus two. Not much else to say about that shit. Uh, it is a tool to use at the wall. 15 frames yeah. is fast enough for you to, like, yeah. catch people whiffing something up close, I guess, but I mean, yeah, that's not a bad risk to take, because this, if you fuck this up, you, you're launch punch them but if you fuck yeah. this up, you're only negative 13. So, yeah. good at the wall, too. Especially since it's armor now. It makes it even better at the wall than it used to be. Alright, next we got uh, down forward 1-2. This is a 14 frame. His down forward 1 is a 14 frame mid poke. Unlike your standard... Uh, <clears throat> your standard uh, 13 frame down forward 1s, right? He does have this extension, which I talked about. I showed you guys earlier. 28 damage. Now the thing about this extension is it has it used to have counter properties. Is it still? Uh, it it doesn't. This used to cause a breakable stun on counter hit, and that's why you were able to to delay it, and that's also why it's unsafe. But not anymore. Apparently, that's weird. I wonder why they took that away. Now it's just the same as it is on regular hit. Just plus one. Well, so this one sucks now. <laughs> it sucks to like just fish for that second hit counter hit now. There's no reason. To. This is gonna be the same shit, except 15 to 18 damage. That's trash. Only negative 12, but still, that's trash. That's bad. I think it used to be worse on blocks, though. I'm not sure about that. Uh, let's see how it's down forward one track. Hey, it tracks to his right side. 
So this is one of those like Kazumi's. You want to go right. Oh, not at zero on block. Oh, it is one of those. Okay, what happens if you go right? Oh my god. It's one of those. Oh boy. It is a definitive tracker to his left side. But his right side. Yeah. Let's test this shit. There's only one way to be sure, right? Welcome to the King of Bob. Lily. Test it against the best, right? Check your work before you submit your answer. Get ready for the next time. That shit's hella good with Kazumi's down one. Yes, it sure is, Ruthless. I agree. Yoshi's force is weird as hell. That's because it's the same. He's always sounding that way. Yoshi always had that, that like high pitched, like groany, whiny kind of sounding voice. Unexpected. Good. I'm not crazy. It's just Bob. It's just Bob and probably several other characters because Bob does not have a, real, a particularly bad sidestep. Defi uh, definitive tracker to Bob's left side. Though. Like most outboard ones, they track to one side. Welcome to the King of Bob. Like if I try this on like an average character. By the way, uh, as always, you guys, you can ask questions about other characters. It doesn't have to be just Bob related here. If I do know, I will answer. It's gonna be the thing with most characters, right? Not off of zero, his two block, uh, his uh, two jab on block. So plus one, yep. Negative three, yep. This is gonna clip your ass randomly. I hate this kind of thing because then I can't say for sure. I'm gonna decide since my left to get this down for one. Like you know, logic dictates. You know, it's, it's gonna be weird. It's gonna sometimes clip me, sometimes it's not. I like definitive, like, yes, you can sidestep that in this direction, unless you're a shitty character like Gigas. I don't think anybody else believes in Bob in a team's this tournament. No other good players, at least, that I can think of. I'm sure they're, they're out there, but I can't remember them right now. It's like a weird... Is that a daddy long legs? It's like a weird thin insect on my wall right now. I can't tell what it is. I'm just kind of keeping my eye on it to make sure it doesn't come attack. Alright, so... That's down for one. <sighs> it is his go-to mid pro probably. Other than maybe back two, but back two is negative five. Oh! This is risky because it's mid high, but it is negative three also. You can tell the fish for, you know, you can use this like your standard uh, mid poke sidestep pressure negative three. Just like Kazumi's not forward one, it's one frame slower. Kazumi is the uh, Kazumi and Heihachi are the standard bearers for 13 frame pokes for me right now. <laughs> with with built-in follow-up options. All the other ones I compare them to those two. So this is basically a one frame slower, less damaging, non-knockdown version of Kazumi and Heihachi's down forward one two. Simple, right? Easy way to think about it. You use them in the exact same way. 
when you label moves that way in your head, you know how his hair looks so fucking weird. It looks like leaves are like yellow leaves are patched, dead leaves are patched up on his head. Uh, probably because my graphic saves are low. Anyway, enough to scrap. When you categorize move in Tekken, one of the easiest ways to like just learn how to use characters when you're dicking around with other characters is categorize moves in that way, right? This is a twin pistons, basically, right? I could use it just like I could use any other twin pistons. I could delay the second hit. It might not be for the counter hit properties, but it could be just another deterrent of swing after the first hit on block. I could sidestep to confirm it off of a whiff, and I could pressure with the first hit as a poke. Same way you use twin pistons. Outside of jungles, just in the neutral. So, next is, what is next? Down forward two. This move is fucking infinite. I said this earlier when I started. This in 6.0 in the arcade, this launched on normal hit. And sure, while, uh, ba, uh, while uh, Law and Paul have that too and a couple of others, like, oh, that's not such a big deal, but they didn't have like the high crush properties of Bob's. They didn't have the range of Bob down forward two. His is better than theirs. Uh, and they don't have the hitbox of Bob down forward two. And they don't have the rest of Bob's offense. Like, <laughs> in 6.0. That's why his was like, they had to fucking nerf that shit. So now it's a counter hit launcher. Ever since uh, 6 console. Or BR, if you will. Maybe even before that, they nerfed it. They did patch the arcade a couple times. Negative 8 on hit, despite the safeness. Counter hit launcher on standing or crouching opponents. Uh, plan 80, thanks for the. Uh, is Plan 80 a reference to something? Whatever, thanks for the follow. Or is that Plan or Pian? I can't tell. That was an I or an L. Uh, so, let's test the tracking on this thing. Yeah, that's expected. I just expect a wild tracks. That's so. Just like his down forward one, we're in another one like that, except it's off the jab. <laughs> I'm thinking a Star Wars reference with Plan 88 or some shit like that. Is that what it was? Saint only played Bob then because he was chip. Yeah, he dropped Bob for good, as most people did. Alright. Uh, ooh, this song is fucking sick. Kim? Kim, why do you always have such good music? So that's pretty much down forward, too. It definitely tracks to Bob's right side. The left side, it gets a little suspect. And on counter hit, it launches. You do whatever the fuck the jump is, yeah. right? Oh, no. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I can't do that jump. Fifty-six plus eleven damage, so sixty-seven uh, damage. Not bad. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Next, we got down forward three. Ah, this string. So down forward three by itself. Eighteen frame startup plus four on the hits. Negative seven on block. And then we got down forward three one. <laughs> A natural combo on normal hits plus eight on hit good 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 oh, that's really good when you get to when you start getting into territory of plus seven or plus eight and you're this close to your opponent you could force really strong mix-ups like uh i'll show you what do we confirm doesn't track at all forward two doesn't track at all right like 
if I do a... Uh... See? Forward two is a tracking, all right. All right. But when we get to plus eight territory, you ain't sidestepping shit. <clears throat> The same goes for, let's say, 15 frame moves. Uh, 14 frames, sure. 15 frame linear moves. Slower than 15, it might start to get a little suspect. So yeah, we got that out of the way. So down for 31. Uh, it's risky though, because it is mid-high, but he has a third hit. <laughs> so. Down for 3 one, one. Oh my god, that's second hit. Uh, I might not be able to space this. Okay, so not on normal yeah. hit. Only negative 10, not bad. Counter hit, of course, that makes sense. Yeah. The last hit. Now the second hit wants to connect. Yeah. Knocks down. Nice. Yeah. Yes! He gets the down 3-4 pickup for a juggle off of that. Nice. That's good shit. Any delay? Ooh, and you could delay it. Only plus one on regular hit. You can't delay the second hit. You can only delay the third hit, which is the hit that you want to delay. You gotta delay it too much. Only a little bit. So the second hit tracks sidestep, right? Oh, look at that. Oh, let's see how good this really is. <laughs> Damn, you got a sidestep beat for that first hit. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to getting a hitbox. It's going to be a lot easier to stair step like that. So, what I'm doing there is I'm sidestepping. Canceling the sidestep with the back and then sidestepping left again to get on the second hit. That's not really necessary for stuff like this. I just like to do that to see if it's possible. Stair stepping is good though, trust me on that one. Um, it's useful. Of course, you can do the same thing for the, for the uh, second hit going the other way. See how it's like while we step the second hit tracks? You can do the same thing. See? Just double side step. Of course you can also sidewalk, but you might not want to commit to the sidewalk. You might want to stop for a moment to block just in case he does like a homie move or something, and then step again. It, it kind of works like another defensive OS. Just like side step to duck does. See? Same thing. Well, anyway. Ah, if you don't delay it, that's a tight gap. You have to like instant while standing. Woo! You really have to instant while standing. And mind you, I'm doing it with a 14 frame while standing launcher. If you're one of those cats that has like slow while standing options, that's 15 frames I'm trying to win out. While standing one. Yeah. He could probably convert if you exchange too. The down three four stuff. He might have to dash though. So this is a pretty good string. Unless you can sidestep it. Let's see the last hit. Nope, happy doesn't delay, man. He does delay it. Yeah, if he delays it though. Then you can sidestep. And exchanges with jabs. That's good. A jab exchange is good. Because a jab exchange means you can still pick up with down three, uh, four, probably. Unless it's a uh, Feng Palm. 
or a Jack 10 frame pull. Got my ass beat by a decent bomb player the other day. Oops, do you remember what move? Yeah, video games, that's pretty much it. Down forward one tracks to his left, down forward two tracks to his right. But of course, you'll need a counter hit for down forward two tracking to his right to really matter. But it does track to his right. If you remember what moves the bomb player do to fuck you up, step one is. Or, or it may, you know, not all the moves, obviously. But if there was like a particular move. That was sticking out to you that's your step one you want to like figure out what to do against those ones specifically even if it's like oh he was pestering me a lot with, with like a jab and down four one you know that's easy to deal with <clears throat> so we're not done with the down four three screen with down four uh three one one which is test and negative test Oh, standing. You recover standing. So you get a full tender. Okay, got it. It looks like it would force you crouching, but next we got down forward three two. Woo! Where's that pose? Does that fuck up his That looks like it would fuck up his wall combo? He's like <laughs> He does like a weird ass pose. And he has down four three four. Ah, uh, and then down four three four four. Alright, let's look at down four three two right now. So it knocks down a normal hit, safe on block. I don't know why you would use this to be honest with you. No counter hit properties. Yeah. 18 frame starter, so it wouldn't be a block punish. Though. Well the range looks pretty good. Maybe this might be a block punish for certain moves. Then again, you just use up forward one plus two. You want to use down forward three in those situations. Probably better range and it's faster, so it's not really good for that. So I don't know what what I would use this down forward three two for. I have to use it as maybe wall carry, maybe. Like a solid damage to hit filler for wall carry. That's one use of, for down forward three two. Can't really think of anything else. Maybe you guys know you, you actual ball players out there. Next, the third hit combos, the 4-4. Four, four. Interesting. But there's no mid. And you cannot delay the low. If you can, it's like not noticing. And it all connects on counter. Uh, that 4-3-4 four, four by itself. Is negative 12 uh, on block, negative one on hits, and the same thing on counter hit. No counter hit properties, okay. Uh, the high in the end there is negative 13 on block, zero on hit and counter hit. Does it jail? Ignore that I said that. It's a low. <laughs> it's not gonna fucking jail. 
Oh yeah, if you duck it, you fuck him up. Of course, you can also just low pair if you don't want to deal with the will he won't be mixed up. Uh, oh, what the fuck? He kicks the high out so fast that while standing four, he ducks it. He's like still ducking. <laughs> I, this might be a boss specific thing, I don't know. <laughs> Cause then that means if he ends it with the second kick, you'll get the wall standing four regardless. That's weird. Big boy season, what's up guys? Alright, well, weird move. I'm not gonna call it useless per se, but he has no mid option to really get any mix up. Uh, I think down four three one one is really good. Down four three one is good. It's pretty good. Use sparingly and down four three one one is fucking very good. Especially without the delay. With the delay, it's fine. Too. Um, if only down four three were fifteen frames, I'd use it a lot more. Next, we got down four. 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 13 frame mid with good range. A lot of pushback on hit. It is plus two, but look at all this pushback. He's at a jab range. Even if you need jab, he's at a jab range. He's not at a forward two. 13 frames, huh? And down four four is negative nine on the lock. There's a pushback. It's good. So if you get the block just to tip. This is one of those where if you get the block just to tip, you can really fuck people up for swinging. One of those where if you get a really good feel for the spacing, there's uh, quite a few moves in the game like that. You'd be surprised. Like uh, I know Claudio has one. I forget the input. It's either back three or back four. It's basically like a long range mid kick like that. I know Shaheen has one. And Claudio, of course, is gonna do his hop kick, which is gonna be way better at crushing than Bob's down for his. Wednesday Night Fights. I have a Hyper X, and that's the one I usually use when I'm on PC. Fortunately, the left side stopped working. I like them, though, because the, the ear part, the ear bumps, they were pillows, basically, for my ears. These are rubber. A little on the heart feel like rubber. Alright, next on the list is down forward three plus four. Is that a launcher? No, it's not. Not by itself, at least. And he has a follow-up. Three plus four, four. Now, I believe this used to be a bound move, right? Now it's a tail spin. Very low damage, though. The first two kicks is six. Six damage? Yeah, that's shitty damage. Uh, 
Min min. Min min min. Okay. So according to this, the first two kicks are negative 13. The last kick is negative 4. So it is a safe on block jungle starter, but this is one of those that you could uh, definitely interrupt. So, ah, uh, all right, let's see. Oh, exchange, huh? How about this? There you go, you have to be fast. Okay, so 11 frames for the exchange. You have to jab. You have to jab. Oh, So I got a single jab just to make sure. I was trying to one sooner, but let's do a single jab. And then convert based on a single jab. Sidestep? Yes, that's the true way to punish this. Sidestep right. Sidestep, you'll lose the ability to punish the first two kicks. But that's not the deal. You'll get more reward for it. It is 18 frame startup. So that's another 18 frame juggle. Startup. Just like down back one plus two. I don't think you're going to use this mid combo as much. Unless it's some sort of special conversion that requires you. I don't think you're going to be using this in the middle of a combo. You're going to be starting combos with this. Whatever the fuck the follow up is, I'm gonna do it. Uh, and if the four happens to hit people out of the air, you will get a fourth crystal. So you're covered. My phone is going off on me. Who is this? Alright, the first two kicks. They track. So his left. Yeah, not even a free follow. You could use this as a tracker to his left side. Definitely use this. It's slow, but you can. Alright, there we go. Another use for that. Counter properties on the last kick, right? Oh, okay. There is a very high damage corkscrew. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. Next we got down one. Fuck this move, it sucks now. But fuck this move forever. I hope it's never good again. Remove this from the game. Uh, well, it forces crouch on hits. On block, it's negative 11. Does not force crouch. They really nerf the shit out of this fucking move. This move is infamous. Infamous, I say. So you could recover. So it has that one caveat. He recovers crouching. Negative 11, but he recovers crouching. Wow, look at this. You see this shit? How dare he? How dare he? His hurt box is still, it's still, even now, it's still super fucked up after this. You see this shit right now? Look at this. It's negative 11. And my crowd shaft is going right through his fucking spinal cord because of the way he recovers from his fucking move. It still was this invasive on recovery in second six when it was zero on block. This move is fucked, dude. I hate this move so much. But it is negative 11 now, so you definitely cannot abuse it the way you, uh, Bob players used to. So, it's got that going on. I cannot tell you guys how many. It was super consistent. They would, uh, I would I would move around well in seconds to get around this fucking chop. 
It's like, I made a whiff! And then I would swing with something and it would just go right over him. It would be fucking... That, that's the kind of shit that made me quit Tekken 6. I hate Tekken 6. I, I just strongly dislike Tekken 6. Not as much as Tekken 2, maybe. But I definitely do not like Tekken 6. Alright. Chop is there. It does hit ground. It does uh, knock down. So let's do another one. Yeah, as long as you crouch cancel and do it again instantly, you get a second one. You might want to just back three now, right? Crouch cancel back three. Yeah, yeah that's better. Crouch cancel back three is what you want to do now. Two more damage. I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know what the purpose of this move is other than to remind you of how lame Bob used to be. I can't really, I don't know how you would use this move anymore. Whatever. It is plus five on it, of course, so. All right, anyway, next, uh, let's track. Don't show up. No real track. Hey, hey, Carrie, what's going on? What's going on? I got the Marta key, bro. Alright, so that's down one. Next, we got down two. Right, this is really about that juggle filler, right? But this is 15 frames. Wow, that's another 15 frame punisher if you need it. Good range on this. Wow, so if you need range on a 15 frame punish, this is actually really good with the range. Look at this. The damage is shit, but it combos on normal hit. Down, down, two, four. Uh, back three is negative 15 on block, so down one would be a safe option for ground hitting mids. Uh, I guess that is the... Yeah, sure. I guess. That, that, there you go. It's a safer option for ground and hitting mids. Because this is bad on block. And it's only two damage less. So anyway, down two. Oh, it's close to three, but that's really a juggle so Only negative four, huh? Yeah. Why would you get counter hit by that? So that's down two, three. Uh, down two, one is good. Down 2-1 is basically Bob's version of Jin's back two. We already established that down 2 has really good fucking range. Really good range. So down 2-1 has really good range for a safe mid mid. Oh, not safe. What the fuck? Was this nerfed? Negative 10? This was a negative 10 before, right? I'm not crazy, right? What? This used to be safe, right? Oh man. Well, negative 10 isn't the worst thing in the world. Plus, he has uh, a follow up to stop you from swinging. Once upon a time, if you could believe it or not, once again, I may be remembering this wrong, but in second six, this whole thing. Was it that string? He had some sort of string that did like juggle damage on counter hit. Simple cocky, thanks for the follow. He had some sort of an 80 damage counter hit string. I'm trying to remember if it was that. But whatever, the point being, it is negative 10, but you got that to stop people from swinging. Negative 12 there. Very delayable last hit. Negative 21 with push -back. Still can punish that. Everybody can punish that. Ooh, look at that. You don't want that to happen. That third hit has so much range. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
special on the counter hit. It does the uh, fancy camera angle. Uh, Bob got small character hurt boxes. He sure does. Down 2 1. So. track. Yep. No sidestepping. So no sidestepping. So that's definitely a trap to stop you from uh, punishing down to one, I guess. You could delay. You could delay the third and the fourth hit of down to one, two, two. A lot. But if you delay it, you probably lose yeah. the counter. Stop. Yeah. Huh, you make it whiff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 42 damage is still really good, but it's negative 21, so be careful with that shit. I didn't know it was that bad. I knew it was bad on block. I didn't know it was like negative 21 bad. Stop. Next, we got down to three, which is really just a juggle filler, and... Two to four, which, as I said earlier, is a um, fucking long range 15 frame mid punch. Uh, down to four, it says here it's only negative 13. properties and it is plus nine on hit it's like from mashing in between like, like you can't mash the down 2-4 and the down 2-1 you can't mash either so it's like you, you block a down 2 and there's this gap what are you gonna do you know? so I would only use this for you know despite it having counter hit properties I would only use this for juggles or maybe some sort of setups where you land the first hit on like OQ or something and then that roll, like, uh, takes up enough time so people can tech into the knee. They get up swinging or something. Maybe he has some sort of weird ass setups like that. Like, with this. Like, uh... Now we're just, uh, I don't know. What happened if I do this? No, it comes. <laughs> uh... What is yeah. yeah, I can't think of anything. I mean, uh, actual bopplers would know. Try this combo on the bandit temple. Why do you have to make me do a floor break combo? I ain't gonna do a floor break combo. A floor four? I'm talking about after a floor break. Kuma stage on the floor. Why, why does it have to be that stage? Also, you made up forward three. Oh yeah, there's a wall. That's a 
same shit I did before, except I ended it with run up four three three four. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't really care about like crazy combos. I just care about basic ones. This is just a basic run through. I'm not trying to like. I'm not trying to main Bob. I'm just trying to talk about his move list like always and see people like if you want like you know advanced combos and shit. A lot of people make videos based on those. So don't worry. So much about it. As far as what the actual regular ass combo is, it's just what I showed you before. See, so that's not super basic, that ender, because you have to run up into a neutral and then do 4 3, 3 plus 4. And yes, despite it not comboing the last hit, that is guaranteed 11 damage <clears throat> for like 70 something damage. So, like, you'll, you know, as a placeholder, if you're new to Tekken or you're new to Bob and you're not confident in that input, you could fit something else in there, I'm sure, after after the course. Group. I don't know what it would be, but I'm sure there's something. <clears throat> All right, so that's down to one, two, two. So, that, you know, despite this being negative ten, it's still good. It's still good. Because you got that uh, solid deterrent. Risky, but solid deterrent as far as damage goes. <laughs> Okay, we talked about down two, four, down two, three. Next is down three. Of course, yeah. Down three, four is his uh, corkscrew. One of his better ones. Uh, counter hit a combo. Ooh, look what we got here. Oh, man. Uh, well, it's not that video. What is this? 90 frame counter hit la uh, launch. Yeah. 19 frame counter hit launcher. Alright. I don't know what the conversion would be after that, but that is the pickup. Okay, just making sure. <sighs> Starting to lose energy here, sorry guys, work kind of tucking me out there. Good. As is often the case, a low with solid traffic. More often than not, I find that lows have solid tracking in this game. So, the second kick is negative uh, four. Wait, sorry. Negative eight. But of course, you could duck it. It says negative eight. And, ooh, on normal hit, you still get a juggle. Ooh, yeah, oh, on counter hit, you still get a juggle, too. This is good. The down three. That's why the down three is so shitty on hit. Negative seven. It was negative six at the tip. And the down three by itself on block is negative 18. That's really why. They don't want this to be a good low poke that you could tack on a launcher for free at the end. You know what I'm saying? is the same as that one doesn't have the same crunching sound effect. Um, this is just a fast low poke. Negative 12 on block. Negative 1 on hit. With pushback. I love this kind of low pokes, man. It doesn't, it doesn't really allow you to keep pressure, but these low pokes are great at setting up whiffs against people who mash when they get hit by something. If you find somebody like that, this is great for that. Thanks for the follow song. Especially when you have this character with such good range. Even if it's not a launcher, you'll get something if they match. Trust me on that one. This is really probably what you want to look out for. And so he has a string. Down 4 3. It's just a track on down 4. Oh, 
Maybe as a wall combo, maybe. You can't delay it, but maybe the timing is built in for it to land that last kick as a low wall hit. And if it is, this could do a grip. Because that's 24 damage. Low wall hit will be 70 or 60%. 60%? I mean, so it will do a little bit of well, Not that much damage. Maybe not. Probably not as a wall combo. I never see this shit as a wall combo. What am I saying? I don't think the string is anything special, but I think the down four by itself is good. Especially at the end of the round when you're trying to play safe. 16 frame, tracking low, that's only negative 12 on block. Yeah, sure, he doesn't recover in crouching. You know, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't duck, rather. Sure, that does suck, but whatever. 16 frames. Low risk. You can low ferry it, of course. So that's one to think about at the round one. And it has decent range. Yeah, pretty decent range. Not amazing. Okay. Next we have down plus two. Oh yeah, this is the actual damage 15 frames, right? So down one plus two by itself, 15 frames, five five, high, high. Five damage, five damage, high, high. High high. No, 14 frames. 14 frames, according to both RB Norway and Tekken Bot. Tekken Bot has a question mark for some reason. This is 14. So, 14 frame Punisher, not bad. Uh, negative 2 on block. Oh, sorry, negative 7 on block, negative 2 on hits. And then, of course, oh, I'm reading the wrong thing, stupid Manny. Negative 9 on block, plus 2 on hits. Setting on counter, and then we have now on plus 2. High, high, mid. Natural combo. Negative 8 on block plus 3 on hit. Of course, if you're doing this, you're going to want to finish it. Probably. It's uh, 35 damage, but it is high. I'm going to guess it jails because it's negative 16 on block. be a solid sack or two on the right side. Just do the first three hits to keep it safe. Oh, it doesn't jail. <laughs> so it's negative 16 on block. And it doesn't jail. That's what they need. Is Bob's Hawking really 20 frames? It sure is. Because it's 20 damage and it has a lot of range. 20 damage, a lot of range. That's why his hop kick juggle damage is above average. So Bob's fastest launcher to recap. Two of them. They're both 18 frames. Down back one. Down back one plus from standing. Down back one plus two. And down forward three plus four four. Those are both 18 frame launchers. So while standing, he has a 14 frame launcher. Lost standing two, one. Octagon, octagon, three. Is he hit a string? Ball of illusion? Yeah, if you're talking about down one plus two, it is. I'm just going step by step. Point being, because that goes step by step, I learned that 
this is probably a solid tracker to Bob's right side and he's stop at the third hit. It's safe on block, goes into a mid, and it's plus three on a hit. Why not? And it's 14 frames. Now, you know. If down four one had tracked to his right side, I'd rather use that. But you could totally use uh, down one plus two two. For like a fast option. So down four one is 14. If I know for sure he's gonna sidestep right, I can come into the whole thing, of course. I can do that. But then we're talking about negative 16 on block, and he can duck the high with no mix up. So, gotta keep that in mind. There's something else that I'm noticing about that. You guys know what's up. I'm feeling really tucked out. Can I post memes in the chat? As long as it's not some like shit that's like got porn in it. The only reason I care about that is because Twitch might. By the way, auto mod might activate with something that won't kick you. For some reason, I'm unable to turn off auto mod. It gives me like an arrow when I try. It's a guaranteed back three. Thanks for the follow. Whatever that is. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't read that. That looks Korean though, right? Oh, back four, four. Best, I'm getting a guaranteed back three. How about from there? Same thing. Oh, no, he got away from me. Yeah, no. Alright, so the way it knocks down, out of that or the way he recovers, he's not able to... Oh, while I'm here. is too loud? Man, you guys always wait so long to tell me this shit. I'm here like yapping. Like... <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Milo. These bars lie to me. These bars show my volume, my voice volume as like double the music. track of what moves I was doing. Oh yeah, down one plus two. So yeah, it's really just like a, a 14 frame punish and then he can use down one plus two too as a right side tracker for 15 damage. Negative eight on block. It is high. It does start with a high though. This is, it goes into a mid. Next we got down plus two. So this is actually for like wall combos. This is like a wall combo ender. This is one of those that hits really low to the ground. I think it also wall carries. Second hit and miss. There's a way to only get the first hit apparently. But this is definitely a use as a wall combo too. Mid stage. Uh yeah, mid stage is bad. It's negative fifteen on block, so.
Oh boy. <laughs> Negative 24. The second kick doesn't get blocked. Second hit misses. Wow, if he sidestep, it becomes a launcher? Wait, what a weird fucking move. <laughs> I leave for three minutes to come back, it's all of a sudden the music is way too loud. I guess this is the way my playlist was. Is it okay now? Uh, Space Skylar, yeah, it's okay, go ahead. Covers too slow, so he won't launch it. Unless he exchanges, like with a jab or something. Let's not launch it. How fast is this fucking move? 15 frames. Change for the you got a full launch out of it, but don't use it that way. That's a wall combo tool only. When I do his wall combos, usually I do it at the last part at the end. I'll go back to that move. I gotta remember to go back to the ask you too. Oof, I'm fucking tuckered out, guys. Shit, I got like maybe I'm crashing because I started the stream by drinking one of these, but I feel like I'm usually good until hour three. Here, I'm only two hours and 25 minutes in, and I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I don't have the stamina to be a Tekken player. No stamina. No stamina, heaven, bitch. Alright, next we got down back two. I think this is also used in the jungle. Well, it is 14 frames. Negative eight. Yeah, I know. I'm not. I don't care about what I usually see. I care about every move in the neutral because I want to know what the deal is if I if it does come up out of nowhere in the neutral. I don't give a fuck about only what what people use, no matter how good the player are. The players are when I do these. It's every move in the neutral. I don't care about what's supposed to be good, what people say is supposed to be bad. I don't care about any of that shit. Because when you're playing these fucking randoms, or you play someone good and they start disrespecting you by throwing out random shit, you know, the old 10 hit combo adage, then you, what are you gonna say? I thought that move sucks in a neutral, I never looked it up. I don't know how to, you know, beat that shit. Then it doesn't matter how good or bad it is in a neutral, you don't know how to beat it, right? That's why it matters to do this, to do your homework. So, anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a juggle so but it is 14 frames, it is fast. Plus six, no countering properties. Cool hit effect on it. It's got that Kazuya gut punch, right? The down forward one hit effect. tracking on us. How does this hit him? Yeah, 
that floats. 14 frames. Oh! I know how you guys could use this move. I got an idea. I think that used to be an Oki tool to float back rollers and shit and get an easy conversion. Here's another way to use this. It doesn't matter. Really. Now, what I'm doing now, I've done with multiple characters, including Eddie Gordo already. It's all down in the YouTube. Scroll down, and uh, that's why I know how to punish relax dance now. Now I think this is a tool to punish relax dance in general, right? So if I'm just going to relax dance back here, right? right. And I press nothing. See how that's negative 14 for him? The rules of punishing moves like this that recover and relax, but are negative 13, negative 14, are if you hit him with the move that is that speed or faster, like with a proper punish, it will float him. So if you have a move that's fast enough to hit him in that situation, hits low to the ground enough to hit him in that situation, fast enough to hit him as a proper punish, and floats him, that allows you to convert, then you could uh, basically juggle punish shit like this. Like that. Or like that. Negative, uh, sorry, 11 damage versus seven damage. So this would be your ideal punish for that move, which you know, if you fought an Eddie player, you know that move is coming. That move is definitely coming and it's gonna be blocked. So you do it. The fuck? Was that one of the characters in the background screaming? <laughs> so, you know. Oh, that ain't combo. <sighs> Lollapalooza, it was always like that. It's just, uh, basically, not every character has that option. If your character does not have that option, you could totally hit him with something slow. Like, for example, if Bob were unable to do that, yeah, it's 14 francs, that's why it floats. If Bob were unable to do that, you could totally use, like, this 18 frames, it will still punish it, guaranteed. It just won't float him. See? What's a 15 frame move? Uh, oh, see, if that were able to hit him, you'd see it wouldn't float him. Uh, what's 15 frames? We need a 15 frame move that, um, Oh, I got an idea. See? You see how this is 16 frames? And it just hits them back? I bet you if that were negative 16 and relax, this would carry for a wall splat. For a, for a, not wall splat, for a, a jump. This would probably float him into the second hit. I bet you. So if you're a character like, let's say, Dragonov, who doesn't have the ability to do that, then you gotta punish it with like a down two or a stomp. But Bob has down back two and back two. Down back two is gonna get you more damage than back two. So that's one way to use that move. Feng shoulder works. Well, Feng shoulder works because it has a, a good hitbox. That's all that it means. It doesn't really hit grounded per se. It probably hits like Kuma grounded. But uh, you don't have to hit grounded to hit relaxed. You have to have a hitbox that's low. A mid hitbox that's really low to the ground. It doesn't have to hit grounded. I don't know what's a natural cutting off point for today. Is 
Yeah, that's one use for that move. I think it's also a... Um, when you wall splat with him, it's one of those moves that you can backdash and use to re-splat. So like if you were to wall splat with this, for example, and you would backdash and do that. And then while they're falling, it'll hit them and they'll float into the wall. Because you gotta look at the way it floats. See? It does that float, that knock-up float. So it's one of those. Like the old wall combo in Tekken 6 was wall splat, backdash that, down forward one, and then that kick. Or like one of those fucking triple kicks. One of those dumbass kicks. Or is it this? No, it's not that. It hits if they roll. Well, yeah, it used to hit when they back roll. There's no back roll anymore. Oh, you're talking about the shoulder? Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. But I'm sure Feng's shoulder will work on Relax also. I, well, I'm not sure. I think it would. It has a good hitbox, so I think it would. It wouldn't be a juggle. But, uh, Feng's down forward one. Try it. I think his down forward one is 14 frames. That might. I, I should just check, right? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'll check. His down full one might not hit low to the ground enough. Kazumi's does. Oops, wrong way. Geese gets back three. Back three by itself, it's a down four forward three. I know that. That'll float and pick him up. It's a whatever jungle. Well, that's what I'm saying, um, alias, alias. It doesn't have to hit grounded. It has to hit low to the ground. It has to be a mid that hits low to the ground. Or a low. It could be a low. See? Not pressing that anything. So this is 14 frames. That's probably going to whiff. See? That's gonna actually punish. Now you look at the difference. Feng shoulders 13 frames. That's it hitting as a punish. It floats him into the air. If I hit him late, it doesn't float him into the air. It also does more damage. Yeah, it does more damage too. Now let's see. That's 14. So. It floats, but I don't think he can convert off of that. You can do that, but that's shitty damage. But you see, the rule still applies. That low is 14 frames, so it floats him upward. The question is, do you have 14 frames or faster that will float him and that you can convert into a juggle? That's the rule. Down forward four? It's 15 frames. It's one frame too slow. One frame too slow. It still punishes. It still punishes. But it won't flow him for a juggle. That's the rule. See, like that, that punishes, but no juggle. See, too slow. 16. But that punishes. That punishes. You're not going to juggle. Though. It's 24. See, if this were able to, if down forward one were able to hit him, it would float. I guarantee you it would float into a jungle. Wow, oh, it's too slow there. See, he doesn't really get anything. Oh, down one's his crouch Nope, nothing. So the best way to punish it is probably shoulder. But oddly enough, you're going to want to delay your shoulder. For Fang, at least. Because it's 21 versus 24, if you delay it. Down 4, 1 plus 2 is... I did that already. It's only 15 damage. I was trying to float. It knocks away. 
That's why I wasn't doing it. It's only 15 damage. But that's an actual punish. But the other things are punishes too. Eddie recovers to... Uh, he can't beat you out. And he gets up too slow to block. So that's why everybody could punish this. But only some characters could float. Because the rule is... 14 frames are faster. Unless it's like negative 15 or something. Whatever it is. Whatever it is on block. Or faster will float. That's the rule. For punishing relaxed stats. Down 4, back 1 plus 2. It might, but it'll probably do less damage. Because the down 4 will float him, and then the back 1 plus 2 will hit scale. My guess is raw shoulder delayed will be the most damage. Just a guess. The only way you're going to get better damage than like mid-20s like that is, or lower 20s, is if you get a float juggle. Just to give you guys some examples, geese with back 3 will float that. Uh, that examples that I know. Uh, I don't know. So we already know Bob's down back two and back two float that. Nina's down four one or down four two. Whatever the fuck the down four into the jab is, that's going to float into a juggle. Kazumi's down forward one. As long as you don't delay it, 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 it whiffs if you delay it. That works. Uh, I don't know about Miguel. I don't know. Eddie could, oddly enough, Eddie punishes it with back three three, the exact same move. It floats and he gets a juggle. Because it's 13 frame startup. Uh, Noctis, I'm not sure. Uh, Dragon of Cannot. I don't know about Huanang. I'm not sure about Law. I don't know everybody because I haven't gone through this with everybody. I know about some. Um, King's Down Forward 4 is 14, right? If King's Down Forward 4 is 14, then he could, do, he could uh, punish that. Jack probably can do it with down forward 1-1 one, because one, that's 14 frames and down forward 1 has a really good hitbox. I'm not sure about Brian. Steve, I'm not sure. Paul, uh, I think not. See, it's kind of all over the place here. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, no, we're starting to get to like muddy territory. <laughs> But, you know, that's the rule. So, I would have to go through it with the, every character in the cast and, like, remember, what are their 13, 14 frame moves and go through those. Test. So, it's like... Oops. Oh, I fucking matched. I wonder if Flash can get a flow. You're probably with. I don't want to get too far off track. I just... I showed, I showed you guys that example to really... So, you could really see... Like, if you have a down forward one with a really low to the ground hitbox, it's going to work. Nina, Nina gets the flow only when it's a punish. If it's not a punish, you're not going to get the flow. If you've hit people out of relax and you hit them in weird ways, that's like a launch. And you're wondering why. Like, oh, that's a punish. No. What's happening is the Eddie player was mashing when they were unsafe during relax and and you didn't do like a proper punish but because you did like a slower punish and they were mashing when they shouldn't have been you counter hit them and it hits them as if he's standing that's how it works with relax I should show that also so if Eddie does back three for example if Eddie does back let's just assume that this 15 frame move were able to hit Eddie and relaxed it wouldn't if I block back three three this wouldn't float him. Just like that. You see that floating that just happened? It would not do that because it's negative 14, not negative 15. However, if Eddie were to back 3-3 three, three and then try to press something afterwards, after I block it, this is going to land as a counter hit and fully launch him. Just like that. And the same thing applies to the stuff that goes to relax at negative 5 on block. Same thing applies. You could punish those with a quick low. You have to be like quick, like a quick grounded hitting low. It's like 16 frames maybe. You get a guaranteed punish though. Uh, but if you do something slower and he's mad and the Eddie player is mashing, you're gonna beat him out and hit him as if he were standing. That's why the good Eddie players just kind of stay and relax and either try to hold back or they stay there and, and then wait to see if you hit them. That's what they do. They don't mash. 
the good Eddie players. At least, a good, at least if they think you're good. If they think, if they think you're trash, they'll mash on you like, fuck, you don't know shit. I'm gonna fuck you up, basically. You get what I'm saying? Law can tell spinner, he's got back 4 3. Oh shit, back 4 3 hits that low to the ground. Good for him. That's the homing move, right? The home, the mid high homing kick. That's a good one, too. That's a lot of damage. There you go. See? See, now you know. Now you're able to find out for your own characters. What are your 13, 14 frame moves? Test them. If you don't have that, then you gotta like stomp them or hit them in the ground or whatever. <clears throat> so, that's down back two out of the way. So that's pretty. This is pretty much just like a juggle filler. I don't think this is used too much outside of that. This might be a good anti-ling AOP tool. AOP duck will still go under it for sure, but regular AOP, this is definitely gonna hit her because it's fast. That's what's good. If it hits relax, it's gonna hit AOP. That's 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 my baseline. It's gonna hit AOP outside of AOP duck. All right. It's down back two. Looks like got down back three. Good low poke. Negative 12 on block, plus two on hit. Plus 14 on counter hit. It is on the slow side now. Excuse me. Solid tracker. Look at that. It doesn't even look like it should be hitting him. So down back three is good. Not much else to say about it. Negative 12 on block, slow. Good damage, too. 17 damage. That's really good for a low poke. This is a good low poke, guys. It's, it's just a little slow. That's the only problem. But honestly, I don't think Bob has much of a problem stopping people from mashing too much. In the neutral. I don't think Bob has too much issue with that. Bob is still very usable, if you uh, believe in him, <laughs> believe in the heart of the cards. All right, next is down back four. This is that dumb string. So this is his high crushing low poke if you use it by itself. Negative one on, on hits, down back four. Once again, only negative 12 on block, pretty good. This is 15 damage. This is good too, as a poke by itself. I know it has more going on though. This your king. Okay, well it is negative. I'm sorry. It is 24 frame startup, so it's not that great. This is super slow for a poke. What the fuck? It looks like it goes right through him. All right, so it doesn't track to his left at all. So this has a follow-up, down back 4-4. Four, four. And then of course, uh, what's down back 4-4 four, four is low mid. Counter hit combo. Good. Well, it's super slow, so you won't see that much. I think this is a wall combo, isn't it? Oh, whatever. Negative 12. And then down back 4-4-3. Four, four, Negative 10. That's a high. It'll probably stop people from punishing the negative 12 part. That's where it stops comboing. Yeah. Counter. And then 3 3 is the ender. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So if any of the hits uh, land on counter hit, the next one is guaranteed. But not the hits afterwards. And the last hit knocks down. Nope. <laughs> Maybe on Gigas. D 
DJ does steel pedal, <clears throat> and Eddie mashes, he gets launched as if he's standing, like you say. See? Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> Shit, it's 4 a.m. here, I'm going to sleep. All right, have a good night, dude. Won't be here to see it, but the first three hits of Santa String are his wall combo spike. Yeah, no, nah, I won't be doing that today. I'm probably close to calling it for Bob for today until uh, next time I do part two. Uh, up forward two, three. Yeah. Oh, that's all. That's a 10 hit. We're going to ask for it. All right, take it easy, video games. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, what I didn't know, this has been around since I think Tekken 6. What I didn't know is that third hit is a high, so I thought he had a mix-up with that and this. This is one of those things where day one when Bob first came out, Tekken 6, it was like, what the fuck is he even fucking, look at this shit, what is he even doing? What the, what the fuck, how do I deal with this shit? Well, look at this, all it took was me looking and going, oh, the third hit where the low comes in, he can only go high. Well, that's the end of that, right? <laughs> Just tap down forward. Don't block. Tap down forward. Because on block, that third low is only negative 12. Apparently, that third low, he could uh, recover. That third hit, the low, he could recover crouching if you hold down. Still only negative 12 on block. Cover crouching. Uh, the last low is negative 1 on hit. No counter hit properties. And uh, no special counter properties on uh, that mid in the end. It just spikes. That does floor uh, floor break, though. I know that. All right. So you might use this as a floor break combo, but it's four hits. It's low damage for four hits, too. So it's going to really put a lot of scaling on your wall combo after the floor break. We already know the down back four tracks. So I guess that's the end there, right? Uh, let's see if you can interrupt the second hit. Okay, so you definitely cannot. Not even on block. Which is interesting. That makes this better than I thought, but the first hit is so slow. So it's kind of like, you know. Still, it's good. It's usable. You're gonna like fish for the first hit by itself every once in a while. Attack on that second hit. Hey, hey, thanks for the follow. Favored by chance. You should play the lottery. Next, we got down back one plus two, and finally we go, we get to, rather, one of his launchers. Our normal hits. This is, like I said earlier, this is the fastest from standing that you're gonna be able to launch people. Fortunately, the range is pretty good. 18 frames. As far as what the combo is, ah. What's the follow-up? How did you get that Tekken bot? How did I get it working? I had to edit some files. It's an I and I file. Tek uh, I and I files. Anytime you have to edit them, you gotta open them with Notepad. And in the GitHub for the Tekken bot, I think it's in the comment section somewhere. Somebody posted a thing you need to copy and paste over. So you had to copy and paste it over into a file that they say. A bunch of text. Unfortunately, I don't have the link on me anymore, so otherwise I would just link it in the chat. Sorry about that. Anybody know the conversion for this? Ah, there it is. There you go. Hey. Uh, you should make a YouTube video tutorial. Well, you see, I would, but the thing is, the moment they update it again, it's going to be out of date because you have to copy and paste different text. Like, I don't know, I don't know the, uh, the, uh, the, fi you know, the text exactly, see? Like, favorite by chance to set it. 
I could like I could make a video show you where that file is and shit like that if I find that out, but the text is always gonna change. So my video would be out out of date instantly, basically. Kinda like my shitty tech and tag two video when it when the game came out. How to maximize Mardix juggle damage. <laughs> that shit got outdated real quick. Anyway. Actually, well not all of it was outdated, but whatever. So uh, easy conversion for this is launch. Down two four, back two, down three four, run up, and then do whatever, right? It's gonna be kind of shitty damage, unfortunately, because of the way this shit launches. He might have something better. All right, how does that work? That does not look great. I really wish down four and one worked there. Cause back two, mashing back two is weird. Cause back two two is a string that you don't want to mash there. It's gonna fuck up the damage. So you have to time it. There you go. Fifty five plus eleven, sixty six damage. That's shitty damage. Most characters when you uh, when they get a launcher that puts the opponent in that situation, head towards. Typically, you're gonna lose like ten damage or so in your jungle, in your standard jungle. You're gonna do something real shitty with whack conversions. That's usually the case. I think Huarong is like one of the only characters that still gets decent damage in that situation. Most characters lose out on damage. On a significant amount of damage. Um, anyway, he probably has better stuff, but that's just a basic one. <clears throat> Let's test the tracking. Not that I would use this as a, as a tracker, but... Because the thing about this launcher is... Oh, they made it better on block. I believe in Tekken 6, this was launch punishable. It's only negative 13 now. Good for him. It also used to go under mids. <laughs> now, I don't know what mid I would test that with for Bob. Because his mids seem to have really good hitboxes. But whatever. Like, Marduk's down forward one. It would just whiff over his head. it is saw that shit I had to delay it a bit I had to delay it a little bit but it still does it still does it this fat motherfucker he's evasive don't let the looks fool you yeah don't let the looks fool you <laughs> MB uh, might be someone on Tekken Redder or something that can help. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, just Google the Tekken Bot Gale site, look through the archives of what people changed. Exactly, yeah. Look through the, like, it's the comment section or something like that. Somebody will link it there. I'm sure it's on some sort of Reddit also. Or if you go the, to the Tekken Zai Bot's Discord, my guess is somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not in that Discord. I should probably join that Discord. My guess is somebody there will know also. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't count on that ducking mids in that way, but it, it has the ability to do that. It just has that there. So you might get lucky every once in a while. One of those uh, call hard moments, if you will, that Aris likes to talk about. You might get lucky with that move. If you just use it in a neutral like a fucking madman. Um, it's only negative 13 on block, so it's, it's kind of something you can just throw out now. Before, I wouldn't recommend through storing it out because it was launch punishable, but now you can just kind of throw it out. You know, Mega 13 isn't that bad. And good range on it, too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so no tracking. I thought it tracks any other way, but I've been proven wrong before. Woo! <sighs> no tracking. Okay, next we got ah uh, this move. All right, this is the move I'll end the Bob stuff today with. This is the other low. This is the high risk. Other than the hell sweep, this is the other high risk or uh, but decent reward low. Yo, one George. Thanks for the follow. <clears throat> so we got down back three plus four, and they buffed this move because. They buffed this in tag too. 
Did they keep that? No, they took it away from him. Good. Good. In Tattoo, that was a bullshit buff, and they knew it. Fuck that shit, dude. Good. Good, good, good. So, those of you that don't know, <coughs> down back three plus four, four is the low. It's a cool looking animation because he kicks out the, your front leg and then he kicks your other leg down so you fall down and it's like a unique animation. That whole like, whoa, you're trying to stand up on one on one leg. See, they really did a good job with Bob's animations. He's stupid as fucking hell and lame as hell, but he has all these unique animations, not only for himself, but he puts the opponent in unique animations too. It's, they don't they don't do that much. Especially in this game. Like so many of the characters are like, I like them, no characters, but they're kind of generic, right? They're kind of just standard, like, oh, you get these pokes, you get your down forward one characters, you get your hop kicks. Like, they're all kind of, like, the same. They only got really unique with it with the Starburst on, uh, on, um, on Claudio, right? And they really put all their, all that effort into the meter characters. That's what it feels like to me, at least. But whatever. So we found one cool thing about Bob, in my opinion. So the fucked up shit is in Tag 2. In Tekken 6, it was like this, where when you block the first kick, you would get the uh, trip guard, right? The block guard, whatever. Uh, negative 31. <laughs> really bad. Delayed hop kick. Everybody can launch this, right? In Tag 2, they made it so that wouldn't happen on the first hit. But the first hit was still launch punishable. But the second hit would interrupt you. That was such horse shit. You would see it in tournaments like that. They would do the first hit all the time. Like They would just do the first hit. That shit was so yeah. lame, especially when the second eight has counter hit properties like that. Fucking yeah. lame, dude. He's, they, they do yeah. such lame shit with their changes yeah. sometimes. And then they quickly like took that one back in the next game. They're like, oh man, that was a bad idea. Yeah. Now he does have a follow. He probably has to dash up for it though. Yeah. Now you're only gonna get this if the first hit whips, basically. Yeah. And you might not even be able to convert it, it looks like. Yeah, he recovers way too slow. But on hit, because of that crazy ass animation, he's at plus eight. But look at all this space he created. So, you gotta test what, like, is gonna stop him from moving. For example, backdash, right? Oh, see, luckily he has this absurd range on his down two. So, Bob is covered as far as mids go. Lowe's, on the other hand. You want to go low after that you have to go in which negates the plus eight so the way you treat situations like this when you create that much space step one no matter what character you are if you got yourself at plus eight or plus nine or even those little spin situations like like uh that because uh like that because they always knock back but they give you like plus 10 11 12 whatever right the way you treat this is uh, step one, find a mid that reaches, especially if it has good counter hit properties. Uh, just find some sort of strong mid, even if it doesn't have counter hit properties. Preferably if it does, if you have both, think about them both. Find those. Find your mids that are going to reach the opponent and beat out backdash specifically. Backdash, right? Uh, preferably fast also. If they do that, test them versus sidestepping. Chances are if they're like uh, 18 frames, let's say, or faster, or let's put it like 17 frames or faster, really. Chances are they're going to be unable to sidestep it, right? Even with that much space. Chances are. Not guaranteed. When you create this much space, the rules get a little weird. Because this, plus eight, uh... Plus eight here in the face like this is very different from plus eight back there. The rules will get muddy. So, plus eight in his face, he's going to be unable to sidestep anything right for example we did it with down two and see down two see not not a direction now let's see how it is with uh the low you probably covered good bob is covered You'd be surprised. A lot of characters that have mids that will like track in that situation up close, they lose it when you get that much spacing. But Bob's down to just has such absurd range. 
So down two has it covered for if they try to back dash. It won't hit him if they try to back dash, but it, it won't whiff. That's what's important. You don't want it to whiff because then you get launched. Um, they, if they try to sidestep, they're going to get hit. So you got that covered. But now we know that his lows are, are not going to reach for Bob. So when you get them to respect the fact that they can't move, then you go in. And that's how you treat this. Because usually people think, plus eight, I get a 50-50. That's true if you're close. That's not true if you're far away like this. Because the moment you have to dash up, plus eight doesn't matter. I can show you an example of that right now, actually. I said I was going to call it on this move. So before I do this, before I show you that, let's test the track in here. How fast is this? 19 frames, so it's not that slow. So it tracks to his right, looks like. Oh. Okay. So it definitely tracks to his right side. And it's still calm. It's good. Okay. Good. So that's still a very good low. It's super, super duper bad on block. Super bad. Twenty-two damage in fourteen frames. Yeah, super bad at Magazine. Super ah, tongue twister. Super bad on block, as you can see. Oh my god, I can't even delay the hop kick. Sixty-five plus eleven, seventy-six damage. You could probably do better too. All right, so this is why I want to show you. Uh, I want to show you guys why this is really important. I mean, it, it's obviously obvious why it's important, but one example where it's especially important to know this is. Welcome to the king of Bob. The man. Horang. Horang. Horang, you rang. I rang. We ran. Get ready for the next battle, battle. So for the, you guys for you guys that don't know. I've been talking about this a couple of times in Harris's chat. This shit is plus uh, eight. The bot doesn't show it properly. This is plus eight. Down three, four. He goes into right flamingo. So it's plus eight as long as he uh, he's only able to force flamingo, right flamingo options to take advantage of that plus eight. That's all he could do. Look at how far it pushes you back. If he's if your back is to the wall, then it's way more dangerous because he's right in your face. So, what are the lows? Well, that's one. That's the scary one, right? Because it gets a, well... Doesn't launch anymore, does it? I think he still does. Um, uh, let's look at this move this real quick. During right flamingo. Down forward four is the safe on block mid launcher. That's the low. Left to heel lands, right thunderbolt. Yeah, so it's pretty much just down three and down four for his lows. Immediately from that. Like you guys probably already know where I'm going with this.
You don't even need to hold, uh... You don't even need to do anything for that. It just whiffs. But this will reach you if you don't hold back. See, even if I just hold back, it's gonna reach. But if I backdash... So that's harder to whiff punish, because you're going to want to back that shit anyway, just in case he does the other low. Even though that doesn't reach. Ah! Under the mid! <laughs> bah, baby! Under the mid! <laughs> uh, a jab is 10 frames, so you have less than that time to decide to enforce your next option. Yeah, you're right about that. So, the dirty secret is... For, for the uh, mid to low level Honan players that don't know any better, some of the mid level players know. The good players that try to force a mix of offense have to move forward or have to transition into left flamingo. I don't remember how to do that though. Like there's a way to transition out into left flamingo without attacking, but it moves it moves him forward when you do that. And the cool thing is you can't be hit during back dashes. So even if he were to, uh, what is it, that, no? Uh, there it is. Even if you were to do that, which will reach you, it's unsafe. Eat shit. You can backdash and block that. And that's what, like, one of the most common ways people, you know, when he goes into Flamingo, people get, like, super fucking scared. Dirty anti one on dirty secret number two. One two into flamingo on block is only plus three. Only. So. That will hit you. What about standing? Uh -huh. So cross that recovers slower, so he'll hit you in time for that. Still though, the reason I'm showing that is that's low reward. Even if he counter hits you, that's low reward. I don't. I think. Well, he won't counter hit you for cross jabbing. The reason you want to cross jab is because. Sixteen frames, right? See? Right flamingo, the dirty seeker is other than that armor move, he does not have any low crush. Oh yeah, that too, but that's high. <laughs> that's the other one, but that's high. So he has that. See? That's up forward four. It's left flamingo where he has the dangerous low crushes, right? Now, why does this matter? Well, because left flamingo does not have the eight frame option that right flamingo has, which is that. That's eight frames, and that's a counter hit launcher. High, high, high. So, for example, if you were to press uh, with a stand jab, and he goes into that, he's gonna counter hit launch you. So the reason I, I this is important is you could uh with this just this knowledge alone, you could min-max situations pretty damn well because the fastest move that he has out of um, left flamingo is I believe this 13 frame jab. So remember, we do not want to uh, we do not want to cross jab against left flamingo. So we care about the the jab is fine. 13 frames high. So, if, for example, if a one on player were to abuse you by doing one two on block left flamingo, you do a stand jab, and if he does the cr 
crushing options for some reason because you you're cross jabbing the right flamingo. You float him and you juggle him. And the thing about stand jab is, as I showed earlier, he, ha he has that armor move with both left, le left and right flamingo. You block that and then you punish him. So that puts Huang in this weird ass situation where he has to like, the only way he could really threaten you with Flamingo to the extent of you like being really terrified of him is when he's right in your face, which is he has to hit you with something that leaves him right in your face and goes to Flamingo. Now if his one, two hits you, well, that's a different story. Then he's like a plus like a lot. <laughs> If his 1-2 hits you and he goes to Flamingo, you have to respect it. But his 1-2 Flamingo on jab, you don't got to respect that. The reason I feel like bringing this up now is why I got 51 viewers. Is a lot of people have trouble finding this character at a very basic level. This is how you punish bad Huarong players. This knowledge right here is how you punish the bad Huarong players. You need to know the difference between right Flamingo and left Flamingo. And the moment you start to like know that, then... You can start to work into other stuff like what can I sidestep? For example, right flamingo. You won't be able to sidestep that, even if you block the jabs. But on normal hit, that shit, see the second kick hits you if you go uh, The second kick kind of always hits you. But that's just like shitty damage. And he doesn't get the combo unless it counter hits. So it's like, so what? I could sidestep. What are you gonna do about that? Sidestep it to block. What is he really gonna do? Is he just gonna hit you with that and that's it? And get like 18 damage, whoop the fucking do, right? And if he commits to the third hit, you could duck that and launch him. So it's like, oh, you're gonna sidestep? Well, I'm gonna be like, ugh. then I'm gonna be like, ugh. I'm gonna be like sucking like Manny. There it goes. And it's like sidestep block, right? It's gonna be the same situation, sidestep block, and then you punish that again. And then if he goes, all right, that means I'm gonna go. Um, mid. That's uh, 16, 17 frame mid. This shit whips like crazy now all of a sudden. This is the one that stops you from winning the mass versus him. Because on a hit, that's a frame trap, safe on block, mid. Tracking sucks. This is what old school Huang players were complaining about. I forget if they did this in this game or in Tag 2, but they fucked with his tracking in Flamingo, and they forced you to either use heavy frame advantage to stop people from stepping, or his homing move, which is kind of whatever. It's not super scary. Uh, based on my drag play, how badly do you think the New York local scene would spread my cheeks? Uh, well, I think regardless of how good you play, if it's your first time going, you're going to have that nervousness that's going to make you play worse than you usually do already. Second of all, any named New York player fucks me up for free. Well, I put up a better fight these days than I used to. But most of the named New York players fuck me up really bad. So, uh, I guess I'll put it that way. Random aside, Huang, uh, you know how he has a Just Frame Skyrocket, which is like, hey, Hachi's OTGF? Huang has a weird mechanic going on where... Let me see if I can get it once. Ugh. I'm not good at this sort of input. There it is. So that's from his default stance, right? Left foot forward. Huang could change stances, Virtual Fighter style, right foot forward. Now he's softball. When you're in this stance, it's way easier to do. The only thing, you don't even need to just frame time. You just need to avoid the down input. Like, if you look at the input record, which doesn't work for a record, I guess. But if the input display were on, 
I discovered that the, the reason it's easier is because you don't ha have to have the perfect timing. You just have to input forward, neutral, down, forward without the down, and it'll come out and right foot forward. I don't know why they made it that way, but they did. No one plays will make you. <laughs> Can you, dude, you guys should check out Fighting GM. He streams quite a bit. His name is like GM Lee God. He streams geese straight out of his PS4, so it's some super poverty shit, right? But look at the gameplay. Look at how he fucks up all these people with like super high ranks. He just. <laughs> he clowns the shit out of them. It's crazy. Dude, I, I could fight. Back in the day, I would fight GM. This was this happening when I went to his house one time in his apartment during Tag 2 days. We went like 45 matches straight. I didn't win one match. It was like that back in the day too. Never, I almost never won against that guy. And to this day, I, it, it's probably going to be the same. I just haven't practiced enough. He's really fucking good. So that, he's a New York player. You got Bloodhawk, who's a fucking beast from New York. You got fucking NYC Fab, who I don't, like, get to play very often. Every once in a while, I'll see him at something, and then I play, like, one match, but I almost never play him. But NYC Fab, right? Three very well-known players. Those are probably the top three of New York, right? Right there. And then you got, hey, thanks for follow hey, let's see. So then you got other known players from the, from this, from the local scene, like Liquid, like uh, fucking uh, um, Sparrow Jin. He's not from, he's kind of all over the place. He used to be from Long Island. He'll come down here. Real Law, The Game, Exalted, Blood Red, as crazy as he is, is a good player. Uh, and there's a lot I'm forgetting. Renekon, Reno, Reno Face, whatever the fuck he's going by now. Uh, and there's a lot of people that came up to... There's a lot of people that came that are from New York or come by that, like, I I wasn't around anymore. Like, most of those people I saw in the Shantz on Fair Days. Reno, not too much, because Reno started coming in during Tekken 6. But the rest of those guys were all there before Tekken 6. Brian H. used to be a big part of the arcade. Fucking kid. These are all like killers. These guys could like easily, maybe not in, not in, maybe not in majors, but easily in any sort of regional tournament, they could place top eight. Any of these fucking names. Maybe not real long. <laughs> but real long's good. Real long's very good. Uh, and there's a lot of other people I'm forgetting too. Like there's, uh, like I said, people I don't know that I'm forgetting, or people that I'm just not remembering right now for some one reason or another. That are like really good that you probably never even heard of, and then that are still pretty dang good. Yeah, NYC Fab used to be one of the best. Of the, he he placed second at the infamous Bob Evil. All right, uh, I'm gonna stop yapping because I'm gonna cut this and put it up into the YouTube. I still got to put the last part of my Dragon Off run through up on YouTube. Also, I just got to do a small edit for that one. You're gonna get your ass kicked. Exactly. There's gonna be people that I've never heard of. They're gonna kick your ass. And they'll kick my ass too.